What's up, gang? It's Ken Zark, Ken Zilla, Gazika Milligan, the Villa Villa Chilligan, and we are back on Fate Stay Night. Last episode, last episode, we saw, um, what a face, what a name. Uh, we saw Saber's Noble Phantasm, Excalibur, meaning I believe the one who wielded Excalibur was King Arthur. So she might be King Arthur. That might be her true name. If so, that's crazy as hell. But that fight was and fucking insanity. There were so many, I, bro. I swear, I thought I had fucked up, bro. February tenth, fate, day eleven, dragon slaying. All right. Altria. That's the name she was given when she celebrated her coming of age. It was wartime. It began with the collapse of an empire. An empire that had been meant to be eternal, but slowly waiting to die amid invasions from all sides. In preparation for the many wars, the empire deprived an island nation of its military. That's, this, that is how it began. Having lost the empire's protection, her nation had no choice but to become independent, and over time it broke up into smaller nations. The invasions came again and again. Internal conflicts became, be, be, between clans spiraled out of control. Then came a long period of war, which would later come to be known as the Dark Ages. It is during this difficult time that she was born, heir to the throne. A long, tumultuous period of war. The king believed in a mage's prophecy and so eagerly awaited the birth of his worthy successor. But the child born to him was not the child he desired. His child wasn't male. Faded king or not, the child could not assume the throne unless they were a boy. So the girl was entrusted to the king's retainer and was raised as a knight. The king was saddened, but the mage delighted. One's sex had nothing to do with one's worthiness to become king. More than that, the mage was convinced that the girl's absence from the castle until the day of the prophecy was proof she was the true king. So she grew up under the care of a simple and wise old knight as his adopted child and successor. The old knight did not believe in the mage's prophecy. He simply raised her to be a knight and hoped for her to continue growing because he felt something from her that reminded him very much of his own lore. But even without the knight's encouragement or intervention, the girl trained every day to become stronger than anyone else. If an ailing country headed toward its own demise can only be saved by a king, the girl who wield, the girl who sworn her to wield her sword for that reason, and that reason alone, without anyone ever needing to tell her to do so. And then the prophesied day arrived. Knights and lords from around the nation gathered in hopes of being chosen to be king. If this was a, to be a contest to determine the best king possible, all assumed the selection would be made in a mounted joust. Instead, all that waited at the side of selection was a naked blade thrust into a stone. On the hilt of the sword, a glittering golden inscription read, Whoever pulleth this sword from the stone is the rightful king of England. Many knights took their turn trying to draw the sword from the stone, but none were able to draw the sword from the stone, so the knights decided to compete in a joust, as they had originally expected on arriving. The girl was not yet a knight, and so could not participate in the joust. She approached the stone of selection, which sat largely abandoned, its appeal having since long faded, and reached for the sword's hilt. She did not hesitate. Wait just a second there. Maybe you should think before you take hold of that. She turned around, and before her stood the most feared and mage in the nation. He gave his warning. Once she takes hold of that sword, she will cease to be human. She responded only with a nod. To be king is to no longer be human. She has been resolved to this from the moment she was born. To be king is to kill more than anyone, in protection of everyone. The young girl thought of this every night and lay in bed, shivering at the implications until morning. Not a day went by that she was not afraid, but in that moment, she pledged that her days of fear were at an end. 
she drew the sword effortlessly from the stone, and bright light engulfed the whole of the, whole of the side of selection. And in that instant, she ceased to be human. A king's sex does not matter. So long as they carry out the function of a king, none would care about a king's appearance or even bother to pay attention to such a thing. And even if someone noticed the king was a woman, it would not matter so long as she was a good king. The sword's magical energy must have halted her growth. While many knights found it eerie and feared her, most saw their lord's immortality as a divine gift. And so, the legendary celebrated age of the king began. The new king, in battle, was seen as something of a god of war. The king always led from the front. No enemies could stand in her way. Altria, the god of battle. Held as the dragon incarnate, she knew no defeat. In 10 years, she fought 12 battles and never once lost. In those days, her chief duty as king was on the battlefield. Not once did she turn back. Not once was she disgraced. She was raised to kingship and fulfilled her obligations without hesitation. Maybe that's why I had a vision of her. Her soul must still be on the battlefield. It's not yet dawn. She stands under the indigo sky and let the wind whip at her as she stares off into the distance. The sky is high and clouds slide by overhead. Out in the clear air, sword in hand, she gazes at the great army she's about to confront. That image of her won't leave me. It's burned into my mind now. She and her sword are one. The sword from the stone which chose the king. The brilliance of the sword that determined her fate is also her brilliance. But I tilt my head in wonder at this dream. That sword isn't the one that she holds. It's similar, but it's different. The sword she holds now isn't the one she used last night. But if that's the case, what happened to that incredible sword? Oh, damn, nigga. No, not flowchart. So her name is just Altria. That's it? She don't got a last name? I mean, shit, okay. Oh, let me say this, bro. I appreciate if y'all, like, you know, give me a little information about, you know, things and shit. You know, that's cool. But try not to spoil, like, try not to tell me anything that might change how I see shit, you know, like nothing that I like nothing that I'm if I'm going to find out later on in the game or in a future game, then don't say it. Like, don't tell me at all. Like, don't say shit about it in the comments. Like, if it unless it's something that I missed or something that I should have known going into it, don't tell me anything. If it's something I'm gonna find out if I keep playing, just stay silent, don't say nothing. It might be agonizing, but just don't say nothing. I'm like, I, I like to play my games as blind as possible. Like, seriously, I like to play my games as blind as possible. I don't like to know shit before I get into a game. When I wake from my dream, I find myself in my own room. It's bright outside. I must have come back to my room last night, unable to make a decision, then fallen asleep while I was watching over Saber. That was a dream. It was a strange dream. What I saw, I had no way of knowing any of that. And that wasn't the saver I know. Is it even possible for me to dream of such a thing? But that sword was definitely different from the one saver had. I racked my brain. Saber's identity had been unclear. And honestly, I still can't get my head around who she really is. Saber is Saber. I can't change the way I act around her, and I don't think Saber would want that in any case. But she looked incredible. She looked really cool with that sword last night, but she looked good with that sword in my dreams too. It'd be fair to say I was in awe. The sword last night and the sword from my dreams soon to have left one hell of an oppression on me. Guess I got a thing for swords. I thought Lancer's spear was beautiful when I saw it too. But my passion for swords is on a whole nother level. It would appear I have a thing for swords. 
Well, that's not really anything new. I draw in a deep breath and reach up, finding my forehead dripping with sweat. Sure, it's hot here. I wipe the sweat from my forehead. It's winter, but my body feels flushed. I don't know why, but it feels like my blood is getting hotter and it's unsettling. I wonder why. Ever since I saw Saber's sword, I... My whole body's been hot for some. This nigga's horny. My left hand, the one with the command spell, feels like it's holding a hand warmer. It's the same sensation I felt when Tosaka made me swallow a jewel. Like there's something stirring in me or making me want to run. I take a deep breath trying to calm myself. Saber is probably still asleep. She still hasn't woken up, but it looks like she's stabilizing. Her breathing is even and that pain look she had last night is smoothed over. Saber sleeping peacefully. It, it's morning like any other. Maybe, maybe if I let her sleep, Saber will recover. That way I won't have to make her kill anyone. Then she could just stay with me, just like she, just like she has been. How could I be so selfish? I slam my fist into the wall. My own weakness nauseates me. It's my fault Saber turned out this way. What the hell am I gonna do? I stand out without another sound. I don't know when Saber's going to wake up, but I have to make a decision before she does. So Sokka's not up yet. The house is completely dead and the corridor feels deserted. No, it only feels like that because I'm so down. I can't decide what to do so the whole world feels hazy and I'm just wandering in that grayness. Huh? I hear something cutting through the air. There it is again. It's coming from the yard, but that's... I know that sound. Well, I don't feel like making breakfast, so I'll go take a walk and check it out. I swear, Saber. Saber, are you outside training? It's colder than usual. Must be really cold for me to feel it, feverish as I am. It looks like it might even snow. It's coming from the shed. The sound of something slicing through the air reaches me at regular intervals. As I cross the yard, my breath misses the air. I find him in front of the shed. Archer? Given how unsurprised I am to find him, I guess I figured he'd be here. He must have been shooting his arrows. The moment Archer sees me, he lowers his bow he lowers his bow in displeasure. That's dangerous. Don't shoot arrows in my house. What are you gonna do if one hits something? Nothing in particular. I wasn't using arrows to begin with. Can't hit anything if you're not shooting anything. He doesn't have to tell me that. So the sound was just his bow itself. For some reason, Arka was just plucking at his bowstring, not firing arrows. That's stupid. That's a good looking bow. Didn't want to say as much earlier, but I guess you're a bona fide archer. I wonder. I'm not an archer like you understand it, so even if you ask me, I can't teach you anything about archery. Your archery is about shooting arrows for yourself. Mine are used to strike at enemies. You think of archers with a concern for things like civility. His lips curl snidely. I still can't stand this guy. I never thought to ask you about archery in the first place. I was just wondering what you were doing. I mean, you are outside of my crib making a fucking racket. As you can see, I'm just keeping my skills sharp. The injuries I sustained from Saber have healed. I can't stay on guard duty forever. I see. So his wounds have healed. That means Tosaka will get back into the fight. I turn on my heel. Tosaka and Archer are going to rejoin the battle. I need to make a decision too. I need to go somewhere I can think alone. Have you ever heard of the word Zanshin before? Huh? It literally means lingering heart. And it's a concept dealing with the time you have after making a move. I feel it's the only thing my archer and your kudo dis discipline have in common. What? I ain't asked for a lecture on the eight stages of shooting. 
Just listen. They say the body remains in the same place after you shoot a bow. That's what Zanshin is. Yes, there are eight movements in Kyudo called the Shaho Hasetsu, which are the eight principles of shooting. The final step, Zanshin, is what follows after releasing your bow. Yeah, what about it? I'm talking about preparedness. Zanshin is not about making sure your arrow strikes the target. An arrow has already struck its target by the time it's released. The shooter simply moves according to the image they envision. So they don't need to check whether it's hit or not. If, when you shoot, you think your arrow won't hit, it won't. If you believe it will, it will. That's absurd. No matter how much you think a shot will hit, some shots won't. If all they had to do was think it would hit, everyone would hit every shot every time. Do you really think so? You at least hit the target every time. He catches me off guard there. I mean, he's right, but... Well, I don't care about that. The point I'm trying to make is this. Sanshin isn't about determining whether or not your arrow hits. Everyone knows what happens to the arrow they fire. Zanshin is the mindset of accepting the consequences of the shot. I know that. You're telling me I need to follow through to the very end. Exactly. I heard what happened to Saber. She must have known something like this would happen from the start. Fighting without any chance of renewing her magical energy could only lead to her disappearing. That was already determined then. All that's left is to accept the result. He's telling me no matter what I decide, no matter what it do, no matter what it does to Saber, all I can do is see it through. I turn my back to Archer. This time I'm going to be the one to leave Archer hanging. Oh, and one more thing. I'll go ahead and tell you since you don't seem to have figured it out. His voice comes from behind me. Saber must have known she would disappear if she used her noble phantasm. She probably never intended to use her noble phantasm in the first place. This time I hear nothing of his usual sarcasm. But she did use her noble phantasm. There can only be one reason for that. Saber chose protecting you over keeping herself from disappearing. Never forget that. For once his voice is completely sincere. He's only telling the truth here. Real shit, man. This nigga is disgustingly fucking weak. But like, you know. He say some smart things. The park is empty as usual. Maybe because it's chillier than usual? There's hardly anyone out. Looks like I'm the only one walking around right now. I slumped down onto a bench. Well, I came here to be alone. Now that I'm here, I should think of what to do next. I can't put my decision off any longer. If I want to defeat the other masters and end this Holy Grail War, I need Saber. It's not what this is about though. I just don't want to lose Saber. But that means I'd have to have Saber attack people like Ryder did. I can't let her do that. Giving Saber that order is as good as telling her to die. Besides, I think she just outright I think she just refused outright. But when my hands when my head slumps down, I see my left hand. I have two command spells left. If I use one, I can force Saber to obey me even if she refuses. That's some fuck shit, don't do that. I bite my lip and shake the thought off. It's ridiculous. Time slips by me as I sit on the bench. I have no idea how long I remain sitting there. But just as my fingers start to tremble from the cold. I knew Ilya was gonna show up. I thought I'd never see you again, but you're here. I look up, hearing a voice calling to me. It really is you. Hello, Shira. You look down. Did something happen? Ilya. Did you come all the way here by yourself again? It's not safe. You never know where masters are lurking. I'm about to warn her that other masters might be lurking nearby, waiting to attack. 
I catch myself realizing how stupid that would be. Ilya's a master. I shouldn't be worried about her. We're enemies. Sorry. I don't really have the time to talk right now. I know we bumped into each other, but I can't talk today. It's going to be really cold, so you should head home. I don't get I don't get up from the bench as I dismiss Ilya. There are plenty of things I'd like to talk to her about, but I can't think of anything other than Saber right now. Huh? What's going on? Ilya doesn't say anything. She's looking at me as if I'm a stranger. Ilya? Sorry, I don't mean to be harsh. I've just got a lot on my mind right now. I know. Saber's about to disappear, right? And you're wondering what to do. Just out of fucking nowhere. Ilya's voice has gotten so cold and detached. What a stupid thing to worry about. No wonder you let Riders Masters get away. You just need to kill losers like them. I move my feet. Something tells me this isn't the time to be sitting. So I shift my weight forward to get up. But my body doesn't move. As if I'm entranced by Ilya. Ilya. How do you know about that? There's not much to explain. I was there last night at the building. I could only watch from inside though. I try to make my hands and feet move, but nothing happens. No, it feels like the more I try to move, the stiffer they get. It's those eyes. Whenever I see Ilya's red eyes, my senses go dull. Oh, you're already chained down. You really weren't on your guard at all. I thought it'd be easier to capture you if you were all alone, but you're so cute getting caught so easily. Ilya, you... What the fuck is she... It's no use, brother. You can't move now. Soon you won't be able to talk, but there's nothing to worry about. I actually didn't come here to talk today either. Ilya's eyes blazed with murderous intent. This is Ilya as I saw her the other night, Berserker's master. Do you plan to kill me right here? I grit my teeth and gather my, my strength. But my fingers won't so much as budge. It's like Ilya's stare has frozen every nerve in my body. Yep. There's no reason for you to remain a master, right? If Saber disappears, you'll be all alone. I can't have you go on being a master. I can kill you easily if you have no other means to fight. Ilya raises her hand. Her slender white fingers reach from my chest. I'm glad I found you before the others killed you. So good night, brother. Saber's gonna disappear anyway, so the sooner the better, right? The fuck? My vision fades. My limbs have gone completely numb and now I can't see either. How long have I been stuck in this darkness? Before I can figure out if I, whether I'm alive or dead, I lose consciousness. My body is burning. Even if my consciousness is falling into darkness, the burning in my body tells me I'm still alive. Yes, that must mean I'm still alive. Even so, it may only be temporary. Ilya even said it. I can kill you easily if you have no other means to fight. She's absolutely right. Without Saber, I can't fight a proper battle. A Holy Grail is a battle between servants. There's no way I can go up against servants. It's been proved more than enough by now. Each time I got absolutely thrashed. Like Saber said, all I can do against servants is try to survive as long as possible. I couldn't even do that. I was cut to pieces and even thrown out of a third story window. It's only this weird, inexplicable thing going on in my body that's kept me alive. It's so frustrating, it makes me so angry. In the face of an unbeatable opponent, I couldn't stop the catastrophe in front of me on my own. Even though I decided to fight. I said I was going to fight as a master and vowed not to hurt anyone. But I couldn't even keep those promises. I'm pissed off. The champions of justice I strive to emulate when I was young always had to win, or there would be no point. 
My body is burning. Every inch of me trembles with the need to win. But I have neither the means to win or even a way to fight. What good am I? I can't even fight alongside Saber without bringing her down. Another mistake. You're not fit for fighting, Shiro Emiya. Your battle is supposed to be a mental one. A fight against your own self. Suddenly, I remember- Oh, damn. Wrong person. I remember Archer saying that. You haven't got a prayer of winning once the battle starts. None of your skills are worth a damn against servants. I know that. I've certainly been reminded more than enough. Then at least imagine it. If you can possibly beat the opponent in reality, if you can't possibly beat the opponent in reality, then beat them in your imagination. If you can't win yourself, imagine something that can win. You don't have to remind me. I can only win in my head. But what can I imagine that would ever help me win? <coughs> I can't imagine beating a servant. I don't have such a wild imagination as to fool myself. Any fantasy I come up with will be full of loose threads that'll come unraveled. I have a theory! Okay, so remember when Saber and Rin were in the shed talking about like, this ain't even magic. Like he's just making shit from scratch. That's bullshit, right? And he's over here glazing the fuck out of Saber's sword. And like, like he wants to fuck the sword and everything, right? Wants to put the hilt up his ass. So what if they were talking about him and he's just going to imagine the sword he saw in his dreams that Saber had, and that's gonna be the sword that he fights with. My third rate imagination hasn't got a prayer against these incredible servants. That's why. Who do I win against? And how do I win? I'm still searching for that answer. Am I really searching for it? That golden sword is meant only for her. I don't want it for myself. It's just, it's so beautiful. Just once I'd like to hold it in my hands if I can. Ah, uh, I guess it's a bad habit I've picked up as an untrained mage. Since all I can do is look within myself, I tend to dream about stuff I shouldn't. I should at least be allowed to dream. First I imagine a thing's basic structure and then reproduce it. I guess there's not much point in strengthening here. If strengthening is the act of applying something to an existing object, there's not much point in doing that to something that doesn't even exist. That means I need to work harder if I'm going to remember that sword. This is well before the basics. This is from before Kirisugu taught me strengthening, a magecraft process that I thought up on my own and packed with trivial steps. Let's see, how did I do it? How did I give it for him? When I come to, I have no idea where the hell I am. Where am I? Oh, I don't like that. It's hurting my eyes. This place isn't just unfamiliar. There's a luxurious canopy bed. The plush carpet is ankle deep. There's even a stone fireplace, and it's, it's clearly not just decor- A fireplace in your bedroom, nigga? What? What I initially take for wallpaper, I realize on inspection is actually patterns engraved on the wall. I've gotten used to fancy decorations like the ones in Shinji's mansion, but this is something else entirely. It's, literal, it's a little embarrassing to say this out loud, but this place is like a castle from a fairy tale. My vision blurs. My body feels strangely heavy. Maybe I'm having circulation problems or something. I feel like I might fall back asleep if I relax even a little. What the hell happened? I try to get my clouded mind working. Oh, all right. Ilya paralyzed me and I just passed out. Casual shit, you know. Happens to the best of us. Happens pretty often, you know. Nothing too crazy. So Ilya captured me. There's nobody in this room. My body feels heavy, but not so bad that I can't lift a finger like before. If I really work at it, I might be able to lift an arm. What the? I'm tied up? 
My drowsy mind suddenly jolts full of alertness. I realize I'm in danger and so study to and then so study my surroundings carefully. I'm in a chair. My hands are bound behind my back. I'm handcuffed. No, my wrists are tied with a rope. It's not as bad as I imagined, but I still can't move. My whole body is weirdly tingly, and I can't get up with my hands tied behind my time behind me. Wonder how long I've been here. Is there a no, no clock here? There's nothing here to tell me what time it is. A window, there's a window behind me. If I try to turn and get a look, but the curtains are closed, so I can't see outside. All I can say for sure is that the sun set. I ran into Ilya in the morning, so it's been at least half a day. I don't have time for this shit. I have no idea where I am, but I need to get back to Saber as fast as I can. Saber's in a weakened state. I can't be even more of a burden by, to her by letting something like this happen. I try to make my arms move. If I'm going to escape, I have to do something about these ropes around my wrists. The door opens. I go still as Ilya enters his room. You finally woke up! Morning, brother. How are you feeling? Ilya's not acting at all like she had earlier. The coldness in her eyes is gone, and she's back to acting like a cheerful girl. She'd been at the park the other day. What's wrong? You don't look so good. You still can't move? That's weird. You should be able to talk by now. Ilya appears into my face looking puzzled. She seems genuinely concerned for me. I'm fine. I can talk. And my mind's clear enough to understand that I've been captured. Oh, are you complaining? Did you know prisoners are usually supposed to go in a basement cell? But I felt bad at the thought of doing that to you, so I brought you to my room. I don't know if that's good or bad. But at least I understand what's going on a little better. I'm getting a clearer picture of what happened. I've been captured and this is where you live. I speak flatly trying to kill my emotions until I understand completely what's happening here. I just need to listen. That's right. Remember I told you I live in a castle in the forest. Oh my eye. This is a castle in the middle of a big forest. There's no one else around. So if it takes a few hours by car just to get to your city. There's no chance of a rescue out here, and nobody will come bother us either. I see. Okay, but why did you do this? If you were gonna kill me, you could have done it at the park. Why would I? I don't intend to kill you. You're mine. I'll kill the other masters, but you're special. I locked you up here so that nobody could bother us. I find myself recoiling. Ilya pushes her face closer to me, ignoring my agitation. Ilya, Ilya, what the fuck are you doing? I know it's inappropriate, but the way Ilya sits on my lap has my heart right. Nigga, excuse you? Huh? Hey, Shiro. Hey, Shiro. What you got going on, bro? What you got going on? It's just a little girl, man. It should be no different than having a niece or a little sister or, or, or a child at your babysitting just resting on one of your thighs. It should be no different than that. What's going on, Shiro? What, what's, what's, what you got going on, bro? I'll call Kendrick on your ass. I'll call, Ke dun, 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 dun. I'll call Kendrick on your ass. She may not be heavy, but the way she's sitting on my lap has me thinking kind of graphic. Th no! Did I say he was cool? Did I, did I say that? I might have to take all that shit back. <laughs> Bro, this is not... What? Graphic thoughts? Yep, I knew it. You're special, Shiro. Hey, want to be my servant? If you say you'll be my servant, I won't kill you. If you just not, I'll spare you. Ilya's words are so pure and heartfelt. I know that if I nod even once, it'll be a choice I can't unmake. And I will absolutely come to regret it. On the other hand, if I refuse, that purity will turn into pure wickedness. With Ilya leaning so close, my mind grinds to a shrieking halt. She's not saying this because she likes me. This is more like an interrogation. 
A matter of if I want to live or die. This is a no-brainer. You don't have Saber anymore. You don't have a way of fighting. That means there's no reason for you to remain a master. No, Saber hasn't disappeared yet. And I'm not going to let it happen. Oh, really? But it would be so easy to kill you in your state. Just give in and stay here. If you stay by my side forever, I'll protect you forever. Ilya presses close to me. I'm not sure what'll happen if I refuse, but I still can't agree. I can't. Step away, Ilya. No matter what you say, I... Ilya presses her index finger to my lips. Back up! Ugh! Creepy ass face! She giggles in amusement and watches me in my bewilderment. You really don't understand. Listen, you're like a bird in a cage. It's my decision whether to keep you alive or kill you. You shouldn't say anything that might make me mad. I've waited 10 years for this. Killing you quickly would just be boring. What? Ilya talks like she's asking for a toy. The sheer cold heartedness in her voice sends a shiver down my spine. This is your last chance, brother. I'm only asking this one more time. Ilya's eyes shine with hope. Ilya's tone is bewitching and brooks no refusal. Oh, no! Nigga! Oh, no! Oh, no! I don't need to even think about it. And shit! Even now, I only have so much patience. Every single one of them is sure Saber's gonna disappear. Saber won't disappear. I'm gonna fight with her until the end. I can't let this- I can't let it destroy the oath we made. Ilya, I can't do what you're asking. I have Saber. As long as Saber's around, I'm gonna keep on fighting as a master. A soft gasp. For a second, her red eye snapped open as if she'd gone into rigor mortis. So you're gonna betray me too, Shiro. Ilya backs away. She looks down but maintains her composure. Fine. If you're not going to listen to me, I'm not going to listen to you either. I've been letting you do whatever you want, but that ends now. Ilya's voice is dripping with hostility now. There's something terrible lurking behind that malice. Wait right here, I'll be a minute. Wait, what are you going to do, Ilya? Oh, nothing. I'm just going to go kill Saber and Rin. If I kill the two of them, that'd make you feel kind of guilty, right? Don't be ridiculous. Saber and Tosaka have nothing to do with this. I'm only saying I can't be with you for my own reasons. Oh, really? Well, I'm still killing them. Once that's over, it'll be your turn. If you won't be nine, you're useless to me. I hear Ilya's footsteps moving off. Ilya's serious. She really means to go kill Saber and Tosaka. Stop, Ilya! Saber and Tosaka have nothing to do with this! I'm the one you captured, so if you're gonna hate someone, hate me! You don't need to kill them! I have a reason. I can't leave any other master alive. Isn't that how Holy Grail Wars work? You dumbass! Don't talk about killing people like it's so easy! You shouldn't ever do that! You're a kid! You shouldn't even be thinking about this kind of thing! Hold on, I need something. I can put a rapper on life support. Guarantee that's something none of you want. Ilya stares at me in disbelief. Too late. I've already killed a master, brother. She sounds so joyful as she says it. Yesterday, though. I thought you were gonna take care of him, so I didn't expect to do it. W what? In that instant, I surprisingly understand exactly what she's talking about. Ilya was in the building last night, which means she must have seen the master running for his life as the perfect prey. Ilya, you didn't. Sorry, I only did it because you didn't. I don't actually like taking other people's stuff. He doesn't sound guilty at all. It probably meant nothing to her. 
It makes me realize something. I've probably known this is the moment we first met. She really doesn't know the difference between good and evil. That innocent laugh is just as much Ilya as the merciless laugh I hear now. It's not that Ilya has a devil on one shoulder and an angel on the other. Ilya, however angelic as she looks, is a devil. Well, I'm off. When I get back, it'll be your turn, so do your best to escape. Then again, a little bird in captivity will remain in captivity because it can't escape. Knowing you, you won't be able to escape this little cage. Bullshit. Ilya leaves. She's absolutely right, of course. She knows nothing of threats or tactics, so she's just... Says what's true. But I can't stay here forever. I need to escape and meet up with Saber before Ilya can attack her. So fuck Tosaka. I shake myself trying to loosen the ropes around my wrists. Maybe she really doesn't think I can escape. There's no one else here. If I'm not being watched, even I can manage to get out of some ropes, but... Damn, I still can't. My body just won't listen to me. My limbs move, but they're heavy as lead. Just trying to move them at all is exhausting. Ilya knew I couldn't escape because of this. I can't move like this. Even if I get out of the rope, I won't be able to escape the room if I can hardly move. My whole body feels heavy, not because I'm tired. Yeah, I haven't been able to move since I looked into Ilya's eyes. It must be mystic eyes. I hear truly superior mages can perform some kind of magecraft just by making eye contact with their target. Restraint is a common effect of mystic eyes, so that's probably what's going on here. Eyes are how we take in visual information, and so are susceptible to suggestion and spells. And that is why most mages employ some sort of protection on their eyes to block out other mages' magecraft. So Saku would be so mad if she found out all it took to paralyze me was a suggestion, not even a spell. Well, at least I was from Mystic Eyes, learned through Magecraft. Some monsters are born with Mystic Eyes and don't even need to lock eyes with their target. I hear all they need is to look to use whatever ability they have. But it's also extremely rare for people to have powers like that. And, luckily, Ilya's Mystic Eyes aren't unique or special. It's just a means of sending magical energy at a target. And that means there has to be a way to dispel the effect. Ilya's magical energy is invading my nerves, preventing me from moving. If I can get rid of that magical energy, that should fix my paralysis. It's simple. There's a buildup of mud, and all I have to do is flush it out to flush it out to clean it out. I close my eyes and focus inward on my own body. I may not have the skill to detect or remove foreign magical energy that's invaded my body, but I don't need anything like that. So long as I'm dealing with magical energy that has to become a curse and take a root of my body. The Villiga's magical energy is lingering, stagnant in my body. I just need a strong flow of magical energy through my body to flush it out. Sorry. It's crude, but it's all I can do. I apologize to my body for what I'm about to put it through. All I have to do is focus on my daily routine. The routine where I force a foreign nerve down my spine. No, not anymore. I don't need to build it from scratch anymore. All I have to do is flip the switch in my head. Instead of creating a magic circuit in my body, I just have to switch my nerves into a magic circuit. I murmured a spell to focus myself. You don't use spells to change the world around you. They're to be used on yourself to empower you to change the world. For mages, they're a way to initiate a kind of self-transformation. Spells are the first, most basic magecraft used to create mystic, Create a mystic just for you, a command that will only work on you. Basic structure analysis. My blood flow accelerates. Power builds on in my blood. My body is becoming a machine for circulating magical energy. Probably thanks to the gem Tosaka made me swallow. Normally this would take me at least an hour. Now I'm able to do it almost instantly. Composition analysis. I don't even need to flip the switch at this rate. I can just let the magical energy circulate and let my hands go. Actually, I say flip the switch, but I still haven't found a switch to begin with. Heat rushes into me. I try to get control over my pounding heart, and my hands slip from the bucking reins.
Blood spurts from my mouth. I must have opened a vein or torn something inside me. I channeled enough magical energy to flush out the mud that had invaded me. So it's no wonder why I'm throwing up blood. Luckily, I don't feel any pain. Maybe I'm not in pain because of that self-healing thing I have. It's an abnormality of my body that I still don't understand, but I'm delighted to have it at a time like this. The ability to heal any non-fatal wound is my biggest and only strength right now. I do need to be careful not to rely on it too much though, because I still have no idea how it works. Relying on it too much risks losing it all. So I can't rely on miracles I don't understand. Okay, now that's just the rope. I undo the rope. My wrists were bruised, but I wasn't bound tightly enough to cut off circulation. I don't think Iliga tied me up, but I wasn't bound very tightly. Besides, I doubt it was Iliga who carried me here anyway. Who here, other than Iliga, might not be all that strong? Definitely was a berserker. If he tied me up, he snapped my hands right off. I rise to my feet as I try to crack a joke. Ah, shit. I can control my body, but I've pushed it too far. While I may not be injured, magical energy is raging through my body. Just moving around is likely to tear my insides up. It's probably the pain. Dizziness and nausea rack my entire body. I have no feelings. I have no feeling at the ends of my arms and legs. I'm not gonna get home before Ilya gets back. Not like this. Why am I being such a coward? I don't have time for that kind of thinking. I slap my cheeks and start walking. What? As soon as I lean against the wall and start towards the door, I hear something on the other side of the wall. Footsteps. More than a set of footsteps. People are approaching my door and talking. They stop right in front of my door. Someone's on patrol? Damn, and at the worst possible moment. There's no time to hide. I need to... I hide in the bed. I don't know. I hide in the bed. Ah, there's no time for me to hesitate. I can't possibly fight like this, so I need to be careful. Like, get, get, go under the bed or something. Maybe I can hide in that bed for now? This is so stupid. This is so fucking stupid. Oh my goodness, this is so stupid. We're gonna get, we're gonna get fucked. Oh, we're gonna get fucked. We're in a bed too. Like, bro, one, one of the berserkers about to walk in with his meat swinging and like, I hear a little birdie. <laughs> He's been a what, what? What was that shit I saw? I saw this shit on TikTok. She was so fucking funny. He's been a walk in with a knife. You gonna walk in? You gonna throw me a knife and like fight for your ass? <laughs> oh my goodness, bro, Shiro, bro, Shiro, you better not be tooted up in that bed, bro. <laughs> Berserkers off a honey pack, bro. <laughs> All right, Nick, stop, stop. Nick. I, I hop into the bed and tuck the sheets over me to hide. The door grinds open. Could it be Ilya or someone from the castle? Whoever it is will probably, is probably, fuck. Whoever it is will probably be shocked that the prisoner has vanished. They will only pay attention to the empty chair. This bed is so fluffy and perfect. Whoever came to check on me should be struck speechless by my disappearing act and they'll... Shiro, what are you doing? This is no time to play around. The exasperated voice is addressing me directly? Uh-huh. I poke my head out from the fluffy bed. Sa Saber! <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> I'm so lost. I am asking what you are doing here. Please do not tell me that was an attempt to hide. Uh, well, uh, I crawl out from the bed. I was hiding. Yes. I look at her guiltily. That was a poor hiding spot. Had I been your enemy, I would have cut you down without hesitation. Thank God you weren't my enemy. Uh, I didn't get the heart, so I'm gonna have to like go back after I see the scene. Uh, I cower, not really having any current counter argument. I think I've really embarrassed myself here. 
Well, well, Saber, why are you here? Why? I hardly need to tell you. Servants need not explain their need to protect their masters. It is my duty to come to your aid knowing you have been captured. Uh, well, how did you know I got captured? Or, or actually, why are you here, Saber? This is Iliga's hideout. You shouldn't be coming anywhere near here right now. I should be the one asking you. What were you thinking? I have repeatedly told you never to go out alone. But you let Iliga's builder capture you. Easily at that and bring you here. You have failed as a master. I insist you make an apology for this. I, I, I know I was careless. But seriously, why are you here? You can barely move. So what were you thinking coming to Ilya's stronghold in this state? I could ask the same of you. Servants protect their masters. It does not matter where you were taken. Even Ilya's built stronghold. Saber is as blunt as ever. She's exactly as she always been. This isn't the weak, slumbering Saber from last night. Shira, why have you clammed up? I, I, I knew it. You were injured in your captivity. Uh, no, that's not it. Don't worry about me. I'm just glad to see you doing better. I'm genuinely relieved. It's just a, it's, I'm surprised to see Saber here, but I'm much happier to see that she's herself. I know it's selfish of me to think this way, but I think this is how Saber should be. I'm sorry, Saber. I don't fully understand, but you came to rescue me, right? Oh, yes. It is a servant's duty to rescue their master. Thanks. I'm really glad you came. What a relief. Everything sorted itself out. Now I just need to get out of here with Saber. Wait a minute. Is that Tosaka? Tosaka. Huh? Um, are you real? And are you really here right now? You look better than I thought you would. Maybe I didn't need to come. That's what I said, Rin. I told you to just leave Shiro Emiya be. All he does is cause trouble for everyone around him, then somehow to survive himself. This would have been a perfect opportunity to just leave him to die on his own. Please, Archer, shut the fuck up. I asked for your help, yes, but that does not give you the right to insult Shiro. You talk big now that your master is safe. First the master, then the servant. They don't have an ounce of gratitude for their own allies. What well, we're gonna end up fighting eventually, it's probably best not to have too much in the way of fond feelings. He must have hit a nerve as Saber grows silent. This guy, he's not just unfriendly to me, he treats Saber the same way. Enough. I hope you haven't forgotten the situation we're all in right now, Archer. We don't have time for bickering. We need to get out of here before Iligusville comes back. Uh-huh. Wait a minute. You came here knowing this is where Ilya lives? And actually... Ilya left saying she was going to kill Tosaka and Saber. That means Ilya and Tosaka passed each other. That's a relief. I think Ilya's headed to my place right now. If you guys had to come here, you would have had to fight her there. Yeah, it looks that way. I did see Ilya and Berserker head outside. Though I must admit that if they hadn't left, we wouldn't have been able to sneak in here in the first place. I get it. Saber and Tosaka only managed to pull something so bold off because they saw Ilya leave. She's bold as ever, but this time that brazenness worked to our advantage. I'm impressed. Well, we'll talk later. I braced myself knowing this was the Iron Burns hideout, but it would be much better if we could avoid confronting any of them at all. And Saber's in no state to go up against Berserker right now. So Sokka gestures for me to Saber and Saber to separate. Okay, I'm gonna go back. And I'm gonna I'm go in and go back now. To get the heart. Alright. Victory goes to the one who makes the first move. I need to fight. I can't hide and I don't have time for that anyway. I need to get back out there just as fast as I can and get back to Saber. The door opens. I push myself up against the wall right behind the door. Huh? The scout opens the door but doesn't enter the room. Hold on! 
The chair is visible from the entrance, even without coming in. Whoever's peeking in will know what's going on just from seeing the empty chair where I was supposed to be sitting. Crap. If they call for backup right now, escaping will be a lot harder. He's gonna have to hurry out to and carry on car and take out whoever's on patrol. I pushed off from the wall and rushed toward the door. And then, they must have figured I was hiding because they stepped into the room as soon as I jump out. Take that! No chance of stopping now. Whoever I'm up against, I just need to knock them out and escape. Halt! If you comply, I may spare your- Uh, Shiro? I freeze. My mind goes blank. The very person I have to go save is standing right in front of me. Saber! How? Why are you here? Why? I hardly need to tell you. Servers need not explain their need to protect their masters. It is my duty to come into your aid with knowing you have been captured. Well, how did you know I got captured? Or actually, why are you here, Saber? To Ilya's hideout, you shouldn't be coming anywhere near here. Be the one asking you that. Ah, uh, we're good. Tosaka, what do you mean Saber's in no state? She's got her color back and she's acting like herself. You should really know better than be so blindly optimistic. Saber hasn't recovered at all. Can't you see she's barely able to stand? Rin, you promised to keep that to yourself. Sorry, but I need to go I need to go back on my word. Keeping quiet won't help anyone. This isn't a secret we can keep forever anyway. That may be true, but she sounds so pained. And now I see nothing has changed about her situation. Saber, is Osaka telling the truth? Yes, Ren is correct. It is embarrassing to admit, but I am in no position to fight as a Saber right now. At best, I can be your shield. Fuck, Archer looks stupid as hell. He's fitted up, but he just looks so fucking stupid. Fuck you, Archer! I figured as much. She's too weak to even armor herself up, but she insisted she come with us. She probably figured she'd defend her master even if she couldn't really fight. What? She's so weak she can't even arm herself. She was willing to become my shield since she couldn't fight. What kind of absurd nonsense is she saying? I'm sorry, Siro. I know my, I'm in useless as a servant in my current state, but I can at least be your shield. I know this is not ideal for you, but it is only- Oh, come the fuck on! Why does Saber never think about herself? Why is she only ever worried about everyone else? To hell with that! Of course I'm not happy! You fucking dumbass! Tosaka, why'd you bring Saber? Don't you realize Saber needs more help than me right now? What's wrong with you? What's going through your head? What? I tried to stop her. Saber refused to listen. And we wouldn't have been able to pinpoint where you were without her in the first place. I know it was risky, but we needed Saber. But you still... Ah! I want to tell her she shouldn't have brought Saber, but I stopped myself. I have no business criticizing. This is only happening because I went and got captured. So Saki and Saber were just doing what they thought was right. Enough squabbling. Just leave it alone for now, Ren. Masters are sensitive to any changes in their homes. We don't have any time to explain every detail just now. You're right. Iliansville must be surprised we're gone. So she's probably coming back real quick. Fine, let's talk later. Right now our priority is getting out of this castle. Are you okay with that, Shiro? Shiro, we should... Yeah, but... Saber's as bad as she was last night. It'll be hard for her to even walk right now. I don't want to push Saber any harder than I already have. Honestly, you all underestimate me. Huh, Saber? Even low on magical energy, I can still fight better than Shiro. If anything, I'm more concerned about Shiro disappearing. You throwing shade? Rin may not have noticed, but your magical energy is disordered, is it not? Huh. 
Well, this is nothing. I can manage. I'm... Well, I'm totally fine, really. And we are in the same state, you and I. I may be slightly uncomfortable, but it is not unbearable. This may, be, this may all be difficult to accept given how quickly it has happened. But let us follow Rin for now. We can discuss this further once we have returned home. Saber encourages me to go. I give up. She looks so serious, so determined that I can't worry anymore. You're right. There are tons of things I want to talk about, but they can wait until we all get home safely. I want to ask about Saber's condition and I want to thank her for coming to rescue me. But now isn't the time to ask her about the dream I had. Okay, let's go, Saber. I nod and get moving as best as I can. Every step is a supreme effort, but this isn't the time for whining. Even weakened as she is, Saber came all the way here. Whoa. Is this a hallway? This corridor wouldn't be out of place in a museum. Ilya's castle must be massive. Hey, no time to gawk. Even if we make it out of the castle, the forest surrounding it is huge. If we don't hurry, it'll be morning before we're out. A forest. So are we really in the mountains? Are you talking about the forest with a couple hours from Miyama by car? Yep. We're in the Ainsburn secret castle. Once we make it out, it'll be it'll take a few hours to get to the forest. It's nighttime right now, so we should be out of the forest before the sun rises. Sasaka so heads through the hallway, not hesitating for a moment. She's probably heading toward whatever door they snuck in through. Figured it was night, but how long have I been here? I thought it was about half a day, but maybe it's actually been a few days? Ilyasville captured you in the morning, so it's been about half a day. Though the date has changed. You have spent a day in captivity, I suppose. I see. Sorry. No, please do not apologize. Elegantville held you captive for a considerable amount of time, but you are still safe. That must be proof that you did not submit mentally, even though your body was captive. Well, that may be true, but... Yes, Elegantville may look like a young girl, but she is still a nice-burned mage. Had you submitted to her, you would likely no longer be yourself. And it is not as if I, didn't cons I did not consider that possibility. But I came to this castle fully prepared to find you dead. Which is why I was so glad to reunite with you, Shiro. My master has shown me that he is alright, so I cannot possibly show myself to be any worse off. I feel the same. I couldn't stand not knowing if Savior was safe or not. Hey, you, you two are serious about escaping, right? If you guys fall behind, I'm gonna leave you. Sasaka pops her head from the bend of the corridor to yell at us. Ah, crap. This really isn't the time to chat. Let's hurry. I break into a run, urging Saber to do the same. Ah. Everything hurts, but I grip my teeth and keep going. I drop my aching body on, following Sosaka. As I half limp, half run, Saber brings up the rear. She must be in a lot of pain, too. She's pretending not to be, but she's in no condition for this. Saber, if it's hard for you. I want to tell her I'll give her a helping hand, but I stop myself. Saying that will just make Saber dig in her heels and be more determined not to accept help. All I can do is keep an eye on her. When Saber's too exhausted to complain, I'll just carry her. Honestly, Saber can be incorrigible sometimes. She has to be forced to even take a break. And so, with Hosaka leading the way, we managed to find the exit. Ooh. Hey, you said this was an exit, but this is an entrance, Hosaka. Huh? What are you on about? You do know you can go in and out of entrances, right? Hosaka hurries down the stairs. I mean, sure, but at the same time, like, we're dead smack in the middle of the mansion. That's kind of scary. Well, I'm in no position to complain. Saber and I head down the stairs and into the hall. It looks like a lobby. All we have to do now is head to the big door at the other end of the hall and we're out. 
Okay, we should be okay now that we've come this far. The problem now is how to get out of the forest. We might be able to use the cover of the darkness to reach the main road. We really don't want you here when Iligansville comes back and finds you're gone. By the time she comes back, it'll be morning. Hey, what's with that look, Shiro? You obviously got a problem. Nothing. Just kind of remembering how ballsy you are. You have the weirdest stuff at the weirdest times. Well, I was more getting at her just walking into the enemy stronghold to the front door. Well, whatever, let's just head out. I remember the way back from here, so we won't get lost. We head towards the entrance. A long, narrow hall extends from the lobby. And at this, at the end it, it, of it is an enormous door. The hall is unbelievably about 30 meters long. I'm reminded that we're standing in an actual castle, but in the next moment... Oh, going home already? What a shame after you came all the way here. Ilya shouldn't be here, but her giggling voice echoes up and down the hall. I whirl around. Everyone skids to a stop. The instant we see our enemy, we know we're dead as soon as we turn our backs to them. Osaka's voice trembles. Back at the other end of the hall, we see her standing at the top of the stairs we just descended. She should not be here. Ironically, it's a similar arrangement to our first meeting. Ilya standing above us with Berserker behind her. Berserker's presence is overwhelming. Now that I can assert a servant's strength, I understand what a monster he really is. We can't do this. Even if Saber was at full strength, Berserker is just too powerful. It wouldn't even be a battle. That monster can't be beat, not in a fight. If we're ever going to beat Berserker, we have to find a way. How, we have to find out how to do it without fighting him. In other words, if we want to live, we need to stay far away from Berserker. Good evening. I'm so happy you came to see me, Ren. Ilya's voice is cheerful and bouncy. She's smiling that same smile I saw the night we met, innocent but merciless. She won't settle to squash us like bugs. And that's when I realized, we're not going to escape, period. No matter what I do, I can't stop Ilya. Even if I try to draw Ilya's attention, that won't let Tosaka and the others escape. What's wrong? You're so boring when you're keeping your mouth shut. I'm giving you some time, so I suggest writing a will while you can. She giggles, but we don't have a time for these kind of games. We need to run to the entrance the second we can find an opening. Even if we know we'll never get an opening, all we can do is wait and hope. But let me ask you one thing. Even in this situation, Sasaka takes a step closer towards Ilya. Iliasville, I didn't sense your presence coming back. Were you hiding this entire time? Yeah, I didn't go anywhere. I was watching all of you make fools out of yourselves from here. Oh, really? So that wasn't the real you heading outside? Right, I knew you were coming. I'm the lord of this place, so I should entertain my guests, right? Right then, the giant vanishes. I'm not sure if it jumped or just moved. The next thing I know, Berserker appears in the middle of the lobby, creating a whirlwind. This is the end for us. If we retreat towards the entrance, he'll slice us in half with that axe sword the moment we turn our backs to him. But we're dead if we stay in here too. Our only other option is to challenge that walking mass of death, however futile it'll be. Are we done talking? Then let's begin, Berserker. The pale girl raises her hand as if performing a ritual and looks down on us. I swear, I won't let anyone get away today. Her declaration is equal parts murderous intent and delight. What happened to the sweetheart I was talking to episodes ago? Berserker's eyes light up. Before Berserker had only moved as had moved only as Ilya ordered, but now he's free to act, and he identified us as enemies. Something's making a grinding sound. Tosaka. Tosaka grits her teeth hard as if in regret. Archer, can you hear me? 
The soccer speaks quietly without turning. We don't need long. Distract him for us. She just ordered her servant to his death. Archer doesn't answer. Ridiculous. Are you mad, Rin? Archer cannot possibly go against Berserker alone. We're gonna take that chance to we're gonna take that chance to escape. Archer is going to buy us time. So Sokka continues giving her orders, ignoring Saber. Her voice is cold, devoid of any emotion. Archer, who had been silent as if pondering something, his eyes fixed on Berserker gives a slight nod. A sound plan. I will be able to make my escape once Ren and the others have. Independent action is an archer's strong suit. He takes a step forward as if to protect Osaka. Berserker doesn't move. Ilya's laughter echoes from above. Oh wow, this is a surprise. You think you're nobody of a servant can stop my Hercules? I never thought you would do something so cute, Ren. Neither Tosaka nor Archer are in any position to object. They know better than anyone. Archer steps forward. He's empty-handed as usual. Tosaka looks at Archer's back. There's nothing she can say to him. She must know her orders are absurd. They amounted to telling Archer to die so we could escape. Archer, I... Tosaka's about to say something, but... Rin, I just want to check something with you. Archer interrupts her, speaking so nonchalantly that it seems out of place. Fine, what's that? Tosaka turns towards Archer, her eyes downcast. Archer's gaze stays locked on Berserker. Yeah, I don't mind buying you time. But you wouldn't mind if I just beat this thing, right? It sounds completely ridiculous. Archer, are you... No, there's no need to hold back. Give him hell, Archer. Understood. Guess I should try to live up to your expectations. Archer walks forward. What the... F hold on, is he strong? Hold on, has he been holding out on me? Has he been holding out on me? Is this the same guy who got blitzed and freaking bent over by Saber? Hold on, is he bluffing? Does he know something I don't? Only 10 meters until he reaches Berserker. At this distance, it could close on Berserker instantly. You're making a mockery of me. Fine, get him Berserker, go! Tear that cocky man to pieces! Ilya's voice is hysterical. Hosaka turns her back, not paying attention. Let's go. Once we're out, we've won. Hosaka grabs my hand as well as Saber's and runs. Saber doesn't object. She follows Hosaka. His music! I start running towards the entrance, leaving Archer behind. But then from behind me, Shiro Emiya! He calls out to me, his back still to me. I let go of Tosaka's hand and turn around. In the lobby, now a good ways away from me, I see Archer's back as he faces down Berserker. Listen, you're not a fighter, you only create. Berserker draws near. Archer is still empty handed, and he doesn't take a single step while he watches his enemy closing in. Don't think about anything else. There's only one thing you can do, so master that one thing! Archer raises one hand. I have no idea when he got it, but he's holding a short sword now. Don't forget! What you need to do is to always imagine yourself as the strongest. You don't need an enemy. The only opponent you need to fight is your own mind. I see him start to shift. Berserker's sword sends a rush of wind ahead of him. I turn to run, not staying to watch the clash. Hosaka and Saber are already at the entrance. I run and I don't look back. The sight of the man in red made it clear that I needed to go. Damn, so he's dead? 
We hurried through the long hallway and out, of the, out through the gate. Hard as it is to believe, we really were in a castle. And an old one at that, hidden deep in the forest. The whole place is surrounded by trees as far as one can see. I can't see any buildings or even the sky in the distance. This way, we should be able to reach the main road in about three hours. We better run. Three hours. Honestly, I'm not sure I'll last that long. I'm not tired, but the pain gets worse with every step. If I could at least rest, my fever might break. But we don't have time for that. Shiro, hurry! So Sokka sounds every bit as hurried. She'd given her Archer his orders. As composed as she looks, I can see the regret weighing on her. I know, they're gonna catch up! Saber, let's hurry! Oh, yes, let's, let's hurry, Shiro. Saber's eyes are downcast, but she breaks into a run with us. We follow Tosaka as she slips through the trees. Saber's breath rattles lightly in her chest as she runs beside me. It's too dark for me to see clearly, but I can tell she's struggling. I can't ignore it any longer. Saber loses her balance. I sweep in from the side and take hold of her before she hits the ground. That's it, you can't go on anymore, Saber. What, what are you saying, Shiro? I have been in situations like this many times. I can still run. What are you talking about? Experience or not, you're still in pain now. Come on, you need to admit you're struggling. I pull her arm. Saber hardly weighs anything anyway. I gather her effortlessly. What are you doing, Shiro? No question, just rest for a while. I'll be the first to fall if I have to keep watching you struggle like that. No, insolence! Unhand me! Do you really believe this is enough to make me collapse? Saber struggles in my arms, but her resistance is weak. Her thin arms have no real strength in them as she pushes at my chest. It pains me to see that's how weak she's gotten. I never imagined Saber could be too weak to push away from someone picking her up. What are you thinking, Shiro? I will not permit such behavior, even from my master. Saber struggles against me, her face beat red. I can't really blame her. This must be a terribly embarrassing position for a knight to be in. But now isn't the time to worry about that. Lies! You're too weak to even push me away. Order from your master! If you won't listen, I'll have to use a command spell. What? That is cruel. I would not tolerate such absurd nonsense as using a command spell for something like this. Then shut the fuck up. If we don't hurry, Tosaka's gonna leave us behind. Saber must have given up as she reluctantly falls silent. That's good enough for now. As long as she's not struggling, I can carry her and run at the same time. Spots burst across my vision. As I run, my blood pumps faster. I try to fight down the nausea burning at the back of my throat, gritting my teeth with every step. My breathing is erratic, but I do all that I but I do all that I can to hold the pain at bay. There's a reason for that. Shiro, please put me down. I will run on my own. The moment she sees me struggling, Saber looks up at me concerned. I can't stop now. Don't underestimate me. Carrying you is nothing. Compared to a broken stove, a girl's as light as a feather. But... Shut the fuck up! It's give and take just not in your vocabulary? You saved me plenty, so it wouldn't be fair for me not to do this. I need to pay you back for everything you've done, or else I can't have you protecting me tomorrow. No, that is not true. And you doing this is most certainly unfair. Fine by me. Just means I have to do something like this once. Besides, I'm starting to get motivated now. I take a breath and pick up the pace. The Sokka knows very well that I have Saber in my arms, but she keeps taking us through narrower and narrower paths. It's a good thing Saber's so light, but following Tosaka is a trail all on its own. If you keep talking, you might bite your tongue, so I'd appreciate it if you shut up. Yes, then, then I will do it as my master says. Saber relaxes in my arms. She was tense earlier with made carrying her harder. Now it's a bit easier. The problem is whether Saber and I will make it to our destination.
I don't know how long we've been running. Maybe 30 minutes, maybe an hour. Running doesn't take a lot out of me. I've just been training hard. I've been training hard and Saber is so light. But right now, there's something wrong inside me. The more I move, the dizzier I get. I feel like I'm about to throw up. I would have understood it if I'd been bitten by a snake and the poison was doing a number on me. Since we're in a forest, but this is nothing. The pain won't bring me to my knees. It's just a heaviness in my chest and a need to throw something up. And it's nothing compared to the heat I'm feeling in my arms right now. Sabers closed her eyes as if she was sleeping. She's not resisting, she's relaxed. Her body is gro growing hotter by the moment. Her clothes are damp with sweat, even though it's the middle of winter. And she's tucked her head down to hide her labored breathing from me. This is bad. At this rate, it'll be a repeat of that one night. The night Saber collapsed from exhaustion after using her noble phantasm against Ryder. Saber's condition hasn't changed since that night. Was she able to talk until now because she, because she was in a brief window before she disappeared? I run in an attempt to prevent that from coming true. I don't care what happens to my body. I move my feet as fast as I can, hoping that we can do something as long as we make it home. I very nearly trip and skid to a stop, leaning my back against a tree. I taste blood, so that's where the nausea is coming from. None got on Saber, since it was just a little bit. But the source of my nausea churns in my chest. Well, depending on how you look at it, this is actually better. Saber will be pretty upset about the about the waste of food if I throw up. Actually, knowing Saber, she might well cut me in half for it. <laughs> yep, that's funny. A bit of levity lends me just a little more energy. Okay, break's over. No, you are done pushing yourself, Shiro. Saber. She wasn't asleep. Saber speaks up from where she lays in my arms. What? What do you mean I'm done? You should escape on your own, Shiro. You cannot continue to carry me in your state. What? The hell I can't? I just tripped. This is nothing. Says the boy so pale he looks like a corpse. Hey. So Sokka comes back for some reason. If you want to put on a brave front, go ahead. Yeah, the forest is pretty dark, but you should still wipe the blood from your mouth. No wonder Saber's so worried. This is a relief. With Ren present, I need not explain myself. Figure so. I just know what you're trying to say, Saber. We don't have much time, so go ahead and say what you want to say so even a big dummy like him will get it. Saber nods. Yes, Ren. Please, leave me here. You are not making out with me. And more importantly, I cannot last any longer. I can't really insist. She's being ridiculous. Neither of them need to remind me how much worse Saber's getting. Saber won't last long. I have the sense that she won't make it until morning the way things are going. I see. So what do you think, Shiro? Are you gonna die with Saber out here? Of course not. I've got no plans to die or let Saber disappear. If she's gonna disappear, I'll use my command spells or whatever. Okay, that's good enough for me. Let's take care of both problems then. We'll save Saber and the three of us will escape this forest. That'll be the plan. Huh? My brain feels like mushy tofu. So Sokka says the damnedest of things and always so casually. Hold on a minute. Yeah, I'd really like to do that, but we can't. Just follow me. I have no intention of letting Saber die either, I'll have you know. I'm not gonna let this opportunity slip away. I'm gonna make you- I'm gonna make sure you fulfill your duty. Shiro said it was okay, so you don't mind, right, Saber? Tosaka looks towards Saber meaningfully. Saber doesn't answer. Instead, she averts her eyes awkwardly. Once we pass through the exceptionally tall trees, something unexpected comes into our view. A ruin. We should be able to hide out here for a while. 
Archer found this place on our way up here. He said we could use it as a hideout just in case. Trees choke the ruins. Only one of the rooms on the second floor remains more or less in in intact. The windows are miraculously undamaged, and the brilliant moonlight casts the room in a pale glow. It's pretty clean in here. Maybe someone was staying here recently. Nothing faces this girl. Sosaka steps over the rubble and pats the bed near the wall with both hands. Shiro, over here. We should lay Saber here. Getting carried can actually be pretty tiring, you know? Yeah, I'll be right there. I lay Saber on the old beat up bed. How are you holding up, Saber? Can you still move? Yes, I am fine since Saber carried me here. It seems I can still maintain my body. Okay, then there's only one issue left. It's been an hour. It might take a little longer even if Villiasville is going to pursue us. No, we might be able to hide here until morning if they have trouble finding us. Oh. He's just reminded me of something. We've run as far as his ruins, but what happened with Berserker and Archer? He stayed in the castle to hold Berserker off. It's already been an hour. Archer should have retreated from the castle by now. Sosaka, he... Sosaka doesn't respond. She only presses her right hand to her heart like she's clutching something precious. And that's enough to tell me what happened to Archer. Sosaka's command spell is on her right arm. A master and their servant are connected. In the same way Saber was able to detect when I was in danger, a master can sense whether their servant is alive or dead. Yeah, and I told him to just buy us some time. That guy, he was pretentious till the very end. Damn, I guess the nigga was weak as fuck. Silence falls between us. And I thought bro was about to turn out to be strong as hell. It feels like the silence will last forever, but then... But I won't let it be meaningless. Since I've lost Archer, I'm gonna defeat Berserker here. The sound of Tosaka punching her hand into her fist breaks the silence. No more mourning. My rule is that I should take action if I have time to worry. We've come this far. I'm gonna have you make a decision too. Uh-huh, what kind of decision? You should know very well. The decision to defeat Iliasville by killing Berserker. If we have Saber with us, we can't get out of this forest. And having her re recover naturally would take too long. Whichever we try, Ilya catches us. Don't you get it? If the three of us are going to lead this force, we need to defeat Berserker. If we can't do that, we're just going to follow Archer. Defeat Berserker? Are you fucking crazy? Are you insane? That monster? Defeat that invincible whirlwind of death? I can't imagine that being possible. If we fight, we die. So Sokka should understand that perfectly herself. Is there a plan to defeat him even knowing that? No, that's wrong. What am I saying? So it's not gonna stop saying we can beat it. She's not so blindly optimistic. Yeah, got it. We're not gonna beat him to win. I should have realized that from the very beginning. We have to beat him, don't we? That's all there is to it. If we don't want to die here, we have to defeat that monster. Exactly. Things aren't as dire as you might think either. Yeah, it's Berserker, but he should be wounded after fighting Archer. I brought my entire jewel collection, and if Saber can recover, then we can come up with a plan or two. In fact, don't you think our best opportunity to defeat Iligus- This is our best opportunity to defeat Iligusville since Berserker is wounded? But is there a way to heal Saber? This isn't the best place to treat her. No, location is an important thing for Saber. Saber's only weak because she's out of magical energy. 
If we can replenish enough of that magical energy, she should be able to use her abilities like before. Osaka's explanation reminds me of late last night. She said that Saber's magical energy was mostly gone, which is why to restore Saber's magical energy. If you want to save Saber, you need to tell her to attack people and eat their souls. And there's only one answer. Use a command spell, Emiya. That should at least let you avoid the worst case here. I have two command spells left. I'll use one to make Saber attack people so she can devour their souls to replenish her magical energy. If Saber won't recover, we can't defeat Berserker. If we can't defeat Berserker, then he'll kill us. I look at Saber where she lies, which is letting her suffer at this point, but... No, I still can't agree to let Saber attack innocent people. Yes, I actually agree this time. Huh? If we were somewhere else, I might have suggested it. But we're in the Iliasville forest. There's not a single human soul around. There might be some people besides Ilion Berserker in the castle, but going back there is a suicide mission. For Saber to eat souls, we'd have to be out of this place. So that's not gonna happen right now. Osaka nods. I'm relieved not to make Saber attack people, but then how are we supposed to replenish Saber's energy? So what do we need to do, Tosaka? The whole problem comes from me not being able to provide Saber with magical energy. There are other ways. I thought I explained that to you yesterday. Er, uh, I guess it's the day before yesterday now. Sharing magical energy with a server could be accomplished by sharing magecraft and a handful of other methods. Back then, well, I didn't say anything because I never thought we would end up in a situation like this. But I actually need to pull your cock out and like... <laughs> and <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's just, that's still like one of the funniest things I ever saw in my life, bro. When I read that crap. Huh? I try to think back on our conversation last night. Now that she mentions it, she says something like... Well, the path should have been created between you and Saber during her summoning. So there might be a different way, but I think that's what Tosaka said. I remember now. You said something about a path and that there's some other method besides Magecraft. Right? Or did I get it wrong? At the time, I was shocked to learn that I, that I had to make Saber attack people, so I might have misheard her. Tosaka, is there another way? Yeah, there are only two options I can help you with, but this, there are only, there are two options I can help you with, but this isn't exactly an ideal situation for either. Listen, Saber lacks magical energy because the path between you two is incomplete. In order for her to recover, we need to reform the path between you to make it work properly. Probably the best solution, but I don't know how to do it. Saber's summoning was messed up from the start. If I had been able to make a connection to supply with magical energy, we wouldn't be in this mess. It's quite simple. We need you to we need you and Saber to bond properly and reconnect your spiritual path. That's the only way to fix a path without breaking the contract of resummoning her. And to do that, we need to transplant your magic circus to Saber. Huh? Transplant my magic circus to Saber? To establish a path between you and Saber, we need to transplant spiritually important organs. If the servant and master are borrowing the Holy Grail's power, we need to create a connection just as strong or else the path won't be formed. And to accomplish that, we need to transplant the master's magic circuits to their servant. It's going to require something that extreme or your powers won't reach Saber. Magic circuits. An indispensable mechanism for mages that uses O to activate mana. It's the core of a mage's existence and without it, the magical energy that serves as the source of a mage's power can't be created. To a mage, their magic circuits are more important than life itself. They see them as a thing that gives their existence value. It's too dangerous to transplant a servant's circus to a, to a master. Transplanting the servants of ghost liners, especially heroic spirits, into a dying person pretty much only leads to severe rejection. 
So our only option is to transplant your servants to Saber. But the amount but it amounts to ripping nerves out of your body, which means the burden here will be entirely on the one offering the transplant. Ripping out nerves is the same as amputating fingers or even arms. Please wait, Rin. That would be too much for Shiro. And if we don't do it, none of us will survive. You should know that, Saber. I go up as quietly as I can. I have to get my priorities straight. We don't have time for me to hesitate when what needs to be done is clear. Osaka, can you make this work? I'll make it work, yes. But even if it works, it's not going to be safe or easy. I have no intention of failing, but even if I succeed, your magic circuits will go to Saber. You will experience an, such an intense sense of loss and pain you'll wish I failed. If your magic circuits are taken from you, that means you. It would mean my secondary nerve, my missing magic circuits, would be like a piece torn from my psyche and would damage the spiritual body's integrity creating a fatal flaw in me as a mage. I will never regain that missing piece for as long as I live. My hope for becoming a full-fledged mage from experience alone will die. Once I lose my foundation, my magic circuits, I will always be incomplete no matter what. I nod for my own sake. Is that all? I'd rather save Saber. Okay, let's do it, Tosaka. That was fast! Oh, well, I guess it's fine you decided so fast, but do you really understand what you're getting into? I do, you already told me. Of course you don't! Listen, I basically just told you that you're gonna have to die as a maze to save Saber. How can you just agree without any questions or objections? Because I don't have any objections. I'm agreeing because it's the best plan we have. You should be more confident in your own plan. Seeing you panic like that is making me worry. And if we don't do this, Saber can't fight Berserker, right? Right, that's what I've been saying. See? And it's not like we haven't made any sacrifices. We have to fight and win since he bought us time. His stance told me to go. I didn't like him. But if he was willing to risk his life to protect his master Tosaka, I can't back out now. Fine. Let's begin, Shiro. Yeah. Are you ready, Saber? We're gonna transplant my magic circuits to you. Yes, if that is your decision, Master. I hear neither affirmation nor denial in her voice. But her eyes seem filled with regret. I guess Osaka is gonna prepare us for the transplant. I don't know the procedure, so I just have to leave it all to Osaka. We'll start with Saber. Shiro, keep your magic circuits on and just try to keep your mind clear. I close my eyes and switch on the artificial nerve in my body. Thanks to Tosaka's instruction, I've been able to turn on my circuit turn my circuits on and off effortlessly. A red flower entangles the white flower. Tosaka climbs up to straddle Saber who lies still, then begins to run her fingers freely along the curves of Saber's slender form. Tosaka, what are you doing to Saber? What do you mean? I'm doing this to help Saber relax. We won't have as good a chance of success if Saber can't relax. Oh, uh, okay. Sorry, continue. Okay. Now get your clothes off, Saber. What?! <laughs> what? Quit reacting to everything I do. You just need to take some of her clothes off. Transplanting magic circuits is a mingling of body and mind. We need to make sure you have as much contact with as little obstruction as possible. Tosaka is completely calm about this. Saber and I are the only two who are flustered about this as Tosaka begins undoing Saber's collar. Please, wait. I can do at least that. You can hardly lift your arms. Quit trying to act tough. Unless, Emiya, do you want to take Saber's clothes off since you're her master? Yes! I want to call her a fool, but I snap my mouth shut. 
All jokes aside, I'm not suited to a task like that. Yes, you are? Well, nigga, no, you're not. Fuck you. I am. Let me do it. Let me do it. I'll rip them damn clothes right off and get crazy. If I had to do it, I wouldn't be able to maintain my composure. Sorry, I'm leaving everything to you. Oh my goodness, you folder! You folded clothes like you J. Cole, bruh! Oh my goodness! Good, so you know you'll need to strip too. Just a shirt though. I'll kill you if you think, take, think about taking off your pants. I can't tell if she's joking or being serious. It seems like I'll need to strip to connect with Saber though. Shiro, if I may ask, please turn away for a moment. No. Got it. Tell me when you're ready. Can I see? I don't. Look, I don't care about Shiro. I want to see. I turn away and fold the shirt I was wearing. I try to distract myself and hide how nervous I am by folding the shirt up, neatly, sleeves and all. Are you okay, Saber? Yes, I feel much better. However, I need to calm down. I try to get my fear under control as I find myself dreading how painful and difficult the transplant would be and how it might fail. This is just a step. You got to burn your dread. Sorry. This is just a step along the path. I should be more worried about the fight with Berserker that comes after this. You can turn around, Shiro. Okay. I forget how to breathe. I've seen her bare skin before, but I've never seen Saber like, like I'm seeing her now as she lies in bed. It must be all this tension in the air. It's not just me, Saber's acting weird too. She acted normal when I saw her bare skin before. Over here, Shiro. Get up and get on top of Saber. It's like someone else is controlling my body. I'm walking towards the bed, but it doesn't seem real to me. Saber, I'll handle things until the sympathizing step. I'll have you take over after that, but be sure not to take too much. The less you take, the less of a burden on Shiro, the less the, less the burden on Shiro will be. Understood. Please, go ahead, Rin. I have no idea what they're saying. Right now, it's all I can do to breathe. We get even closer. We're so close our skin is almost touching. I feel Saber's weak breath on me. I support my weight on my hands, my body's so, so close to hers. Whatever the fuck that means. The chant begins. I try to focus my consciousness on what's happening. Just to clear my mind so I can sympathize with Saber. Hold on, let me read these. See Flagen Hotch Schnell Wait Zoo Morgan Nie Zeruk Sean. I only see Saber's face. She's already in a meditative state. I can't keep my eyes open forever. I reluctantly close my eyes. Reluctantly indeed. As gift Nydrig ist landsum ist na und in die vergon gen height nie vor herbe trachten. My senses begin to fade. It's the same floating sensation as when I create magic circuit every night. The feeling of my ego, my mind, leaving my body. This time, though, it's running in reverse. Normally, I feel that sensation coming from my back. But right now, my consciousness is escaping from my chest. The five senses are functions associated with the physical body. The moment my consciousness leaves my body, I lose my sense of hearing. But my ears are more sensitive to Saber's breathing. Her slow, steady breathing begins to speed up. I hear the heart pounding in my chest. Blood rushes through my veins. I leave the vessel known as Shiro Emiya and slide into her body. My consciousness sinks deeper into her. My self swirls and converges, invading her like as a solid crystal, pulsing hot breath. Our hearts, our hearts, not our bodies touch. 
Her voice rings out like a bell, and in response, my essence escapes my physical body. That was 100% originally a sex scene here. I can tell by the, I can tell by the way that they're writing this shit. It's a euphemism for fucking. <laughs> there had to have been a sex scene here in the original. There's no way. I can just tell by the way that they're writing, bro. My senses are transformed. I have no hands, no legs, no self, but I continue on in this bare state. Time seems to flow backward. Instead of flying, I feel as if I'm being left behind. I accelerate. The body. Persona! Order. Law. I become an arrow, shattering every barrier around me, destroying the boundaries that separate one person from another. Sparks race along the circuit. I freeze in the ecstasy of reaching the speed of light. They say a person's life flashes by in a single instant. The flashbacks are cruel. Every instant passes by in a blink of an eye. I can't look at it directly, so I find myself going emotionally numb. So this is a mental journey. I'm reminded just how comforting our physical bodies, our anchors can be. I visualize the foundation of magecraft. The human operation is quantified. Hundreds of institu in institutions Millions of joints form a circle. The endless complex patterns are in fact just a highway formed by a single repetition, all heading into the vastness of the future. It's like a vehicle of some kind heading towards a darkened city of light. Here in the present, my thoughts pass by at the speed of light. Eternity passes in an instant. I pass through the last boundary. I break through, and I am inside her. I see a glimpse of Altria's magic circuits, not my own. The changes are extreme. The speed, of, the speed and light of the world vanish all at once. Here it is dark, here it is heavy. The pressure of it pushes against my bodiless form. The air is so thick I may as well be underwater. My body sinks, feeling only the agony of being clamped in a vice. The path is deep and I can't see the bottom. I feel myself fall through the thick twilight, plummeting deeper into an even denser darkness. It seems impossible that, just a moment ago, I traveled 10,000 miles in the blink of an eye. Now, even going a single mile seems like it'll be an ar ar arduous, eternal journey. I feel neither light nor hope. Are these really Saber's magic circuits? They're completely different from mine. The shape of the circuits, the number of pathways, all that differs from person to person. But this is unlike anything else. This isn't a matter of skill or ability. Saber's magic circuits are fundamentally different than a mage's. The path rumbles. Every time it does, my tiny self nearly shatters. I don't know what Saber's magic circuits are like, but I can tell the sympathizing magecraft is functioning properly. I'm not gonna say what this looks like. This is not a failure. The dark, heavy pressure of this place doesn't seem like Saber. But it's also not an impure place. It's brimming with life. The flowing air of blood and a swirl of magical energy. I realize I've forgotten how to breathe. I haven't needed to. Sinking is painful, but it's not life-threatening. I look up into the darkness I've sunken into, but I seem to be past the point of no return. I can't see anything in this darkness. I'm submerging gradually, but the distance ahead is infinite. The air grows even heavier. 
My rate of descent slows yet again. I squint into the darkness. The seemingly endless road does have an end. I feel the heat of Saber's body. I feel her every breath so close. The final destination. I reach the source of Saber's magic circuits, the center of her mental world. But what I see is beyond my capacity to understand. It's the core of a star. I've reached the embodiment of something impossible Scorching heat, breathing from the depths of the earth. The fiery red surface swirls, then is a splash like stagnant mud. At the bottom there lurks a giant shadow, its fiery eyes fixed on the tiny intruder. Whether its master gave the intruder permission to enter or not, it is still a foreign invader. In the face of this core, my own consciousness is my own consciousness is barely a mote of dust to disturb its function, or a piece of wood to feed its fire. I gulp, even though I have no throat to swallow with. I take in the entire scene. It's a saber's magic circuits, a heart beyond anything human, so different from ours, which we imagine as lines and circuits. This is a reactor core. If a mage's body is a machine for creating magical energy, the one I'm seeing now is an entire factory, but the core is inactive. The key that should activate the core, the spark of power to bring the whole thing to life has been cut off. Despite the overwhelming ability this core has to produce magic and massive amounts of magical energy, it lacks the initial charge to activate itself. It floats overhead, a stagnant sea of fuel. No matter how powerful, how much under. No matter how much undiluted magical energy fills this endless space, it's useless, it needs to ignite. Even a tiny spark could do the trick. So long as the pathway for the magical energy is connected, the core will roar back to life. And to do that, something beyond human knowledge awakens. Pathways running over the lake of magical energy begin to swirl. Red air explodes upward in a raging pillar. Is this what it's like to stand under in a thundercloud? Hey, bruh. Hey, bruh. You got it. I want no smoke. I want no smoke. I want no smoke. So intense is the roar of the wa raging waves that I don't even properly hear it. In the same way something is too massive to be properly seen, the roar is its own kind of silence to me. What appears at the heart of that blazing core is the embodiment of every threat mankind carries in their heart. Am I about to fight this nigga? No! I don't want to! Oh, hell no. It has been said that the king of the, of a, is the, the king is a red dragon that symbolizes Britain. Phantasmal blood runs through their human veins, the child of a sacred star. A dragon, a ruler, the symbol of so many phantasmal species, objects of both awe and fear, the pinnacle of all beasts, Appearing at times as a demon, at times a god. This is what lies in Saber's subconscious. Its otherworldly form suits the servant said to be the best. The cauldron opens. The vicious bangs are all I see. There can be no resistance. Humans, which pale and in insignificant which pale to insignificance before this can never defend against it. No human intelligence could ever conceive a way to escape. Oh. It must be famished. It devours its prey which would normally seem as 
inconsequential as this most of dust with his bloodshot eyes. And now I'm at a complete loss for words. I wonder, why do we not eat living meals? It's obvious. We cannot bear to see our food alive. We prefer fresh food, but rarely do we eat anything alive because we feel it's cruel for our food to suffer. In other words, killing the meat we consume before we eat it is our way to preserve its dignity. A scream of rage tears its way from my throat. I forget who I am and roar like a beast. I try to appeal to the beast. The hatred builds within me. My only resistance is bearing my emotions. I beg for mercy like a crucified sinner as I'm ground to meal. My consciousness grows hazy, muddled. Every purpose and meaning in my life falls away. Any hope of retaining my sanity is as long gone as creation itself. The pain, the pressure, they're far too much. And then, when I came to see it as only a monster, Even once I learned of this hell, I believed I could endure it. The image of Saber, her head hanging low, comes back to me. I recall the meaning of this pain. The meaning drives me forward. It is a literal, painful reminder of what I came here to do. I draw in a deep breath and let go of my resistance. It's not the dragon's fangs that should be fighting, but the pain twisting through me. I'm not here to run from the pain. I'm here to save her pain, to live up to the trust she placed in me time and time again. And so, I'm here to give her the best thing that I, who has no hope of fighting, can give. The pain is indescribable. I can't reach out, I can't reach out to my ground down consciousness. I hone my awareness like a blade, silently as if I were falling asleep. Here, eternity is but an instant. As long as I can enjoy this pain, even for an instant, my consciousness will remain. All right then. I won't let myself feel an ounce of fear. I shall dedicate this pain to you, who will be the one to fight. The pain instantly fades, the red dragon is gone, and my consciousness gradually flows back to the surface. Am I weightless because I lost something? As if I'm floating back up to the water's surface, I feel myself begin rising up above the reactor. But wait, there's something I want to check before. Ah, it's so warm. A dull throbbing hum issues from the reactor as it burns with golden light. The elaborate magic circuits shine with a rainbow hue and begin their circulation. The fire is lit. I may be an untrained amateur of a mage, but the day I fulfilled my lord, uh, my role as her lord, I surrender my body to the wind and float upward. I catch a glimpse of a distant memory. A figure holding a sword and a figure standing in a grassy field as it dances in the wind. Which one did I find reminiscent? Whoa, okay. I feel sunlight on my eyelids and slowly open them. Dazed and confused, I check over my own body. My arms and legs are fine. I don't see any wounds. Maybe the pain faded the moment I was able to endure it. My physical wounds and even the mental scars seem to have healed. Shiro. I hear a weak voice from under me. Huh? The feeling of her soft skin immediately makes me realize who's speaking and the position we're in. <laughs> Ouch! 
Sabres lying on the bed in her blouse with her blouse in disarray, while Tosaka is sleeping, cradling her knees to her chest. Tosaka may be fine, but Sabre's under me like this the whole time. Morning, Sabre. Yes, good morning, Shiro. We exchange awkward pleasantries. Sabre slowly gets up and rearranges her blouse. Crap, we're so embarrassed. We can't even look each other in the eye. You, you can, you can already get up, Saber. Yes, I can receive your supply of magical energy now. She seems to be back to her normal self. When I carried her here last night, she was so weak. It seems she might disappear at any moment, but that weakness is gone now. I see. That's a relief. So the magic circuit transplant worked. Yes. So um. Would you please put your clothes on, Shiro? I do not know why, but it is difficult speaking to you this way. I look down at myself. Oh, right! Yeah, you're right! I hastily reach for my neatly folded shirt. That was nice of Tosaka to fold it up like that. Wait, no! I did that! Why did I fold it so tight? Ah! I vividly recall last night's ritual. I connected with Saber and Tosaka transplanted my magic circuits deep within Saber. Saber looks like she's back to normal, but what happened to me? Tosaka warned that my body and mind may not be able to handle the loss of magic circuits. I don't feel much damage nor any huge sense of loss. I was a little scared, but I checked on my magic circuits myself. The idea of seeing for myself just how much I've lost is terrifying, but we're heading into battle against Berserker. I need to understand my own condition. Huh? I don't know how to explain it. The overall function of my magic circuits feels sluggish, but there doesn't seem to be any obvious damage. I was chewed to pieces, but my magic circuits are still intact. It looks like I'll still be able to do my strengthening magecraft. I see, so that means... I assume the magic circuits I rarely use were the ones Tosaka took. I only activated about one to four circuits when I do strengthening. Since I can't do large scale magecraft anyway, I've never fully activated all my circuits. So she transplanted the circuits I don't use to Saber. Shiro. I close my eyes to assess my situation. It seems this won't affect my strengthening magecraft. But this sluggishness, like I'm wadding through water, is because my capacity for magecraft has decreased. In exchange, though, I feel like I'm connected to something important deep inside myself. I can't tell exactly where it's coming from, but there's a faint line that connects me and Saber. I've gained something truly important in exchange for my lost circuits. I must apologize, Shiro. Saber speaks up from somewhere behind me. I did my best to take as few of your circuits as possible. But even the bare minimum was too much to take from one person. I must have- I've left a scar on you that will never fade, and I cannot apologize enough for that. It is my failure. If only I were stronger, more disciplined, I would not have- That's not true! You have nothing to apologize for, Saber. This all happened because I couldn't supply you with magical energy in the first place. That's solved now, though. So I can give you the magical energy you need without a problem. Yep. Now I can finally and proudly say that I'm Saber's master. But Shiro... Don't worry about my magic circuits, I don't use them all anyway. I even feel better without them, actually. Saber's expression remains clouded. Crap, I never know what to say at times like this. Saber's recovered and I survived even after the loss of some magic circuits. Saber's magic circuits, the dream of light and wind in Saber's youth. And on top of that, we spent the night touching, skin to skin. Calm down, calm down. That was a ritual for our survival. I need to calm my mind. If I don't focus, I could mess up during battle. The sleepy rhythm of Tosaka's breathing halts as she grunts. Looks like Tosaka's awake too. Good morning, Rin. Yo, morning, Tosaka. I see Tosaka's hair shift, then her head lit tilts up. 
She's not a morning person at all and doesn't look like her usual sharp self at all. Thank you, Osaka. Thanks, Osaka. It worked. Yes, he is able to supply me with magical energy now. But in exchange, Shiro has... No, I only lost about 30%, so don't worry. I can still make do with what I still have. 30%? I did everything I could to minimize what I took, but I still took 30%. I cannot believe my own greed. Greedy, you say? I know you were hungry, but I wish you had a, better, had a little better manners. Osaka joining us helps dispel the awkwardness between Saber and me. Now we're back to normal. Is that so? Then let's get going. Tosaka yawns and gets to her feet. Fuck. How much longer do we have? I'm gonna just go. I'm gonna just, I'm gonna finish this. I'm gonna try to finish this. It's almost time for battle. Somewhere in that forest, Berserker and Iliusville wait. If we don't defeat that hurricane of death, everything we did last night was for nothing. The connection that was created between me and Saber deepened our hearts. To protect what we created, we'll have to defeat the most powerful enemy of all. An interlude. The battle comes to an end. The two fought fiercely, and it ended with the disappearance of the Red Knight. Damn! Uh! Now a shadow of its former glory, the reception room is in ruins. The floors are cracked and broken. Many of its walls have been knocked down. The stairs have collapsed and broken marble is scattered across the floor. There is hardly a trace of the reception room's original form. Some might even say time itself has been stolen from this place. After such vast destruction, the scene bears no resemblance to what it was just two hours ago. A sculpture, well suited to such destruction, stands in the middle of it all. Standing, it over, standing over two meters tall, it bears a crude likeness of a man, as if roughly hacked out of stone. It hardly bears mentioning. This is Iliusville's servant, Berserker. The giant doesn't move. Its entire body is splattered with red, with several holes torn through it. Not a single inch of the giant's body isn't wounded. One, both legs appear to be on the verge of collapse. Two, a massive gash on the neck. Three, arms practically hanging off the elbows. Four, something has pierced it from the shoulder to its groin. Five, blood gushes from its chest. Six, its belly is torn open. Berserker is not moving. He will. It's clearly a corpse. The battle itself lasted less than an hour. The results, unexpected. Berserker's master is beside herself. She should be picking off what remained of her prey, but instead she just stands there staring at the devastation. Who was that guy? I don't believe this. Who was that guy? Her voice in a low mumble now. That battle came as a humiliation to her. Her servant is the most powerful. Among all heroic spirits, maybe one or two could compete with Hercules, the most renowned hero of all time. And yet some unknown archer defeated him. The Red Knight fought on equal ground with Berserker, and in the end even killed Berserker, which nobody else had even thought possible. And for that he can never be forgiven. To Ilya, it is as if she'd been stabbed in the heart by a passing insect. She prided herself on being the strongest master. For her to lose of the sort she should have so casually trampled must be unthinkable. Ah, this is so frustrating! I can't believe you let him beat you six times! You weren't going easy on him, were you, Berserker? The statue doesn't answer. It has neither the time nor the need to do so. Berserker stands still, focusing on healing himself. Even for him, this was an unusual battle. His noble phantasm nullifies any attack. So long as the attack is not of the highest possible class, it won't so much as scratch him. As such, he rarely sustains any wound. In his own time, none can harm him after he attained greatness. 
But here, now, he's been hurt six times. Archer delivered six fatal blows. Even though each of his attacks was of a different sort. That is because even the strongest attacks won't work on weren't twice on Berserker. Strange as this battle was, the most truly bizarre part was, if Archer was a hero with so many different abilities, his identity should have been obvious. But even after his body was pulverized, Archer's identity remained a mystery. What was really surprising was how he carried himself in a way that seemed contradictory as a servant. A faint light flickers in the pupils of Berserker's eyes. Were Berserker a normal, rational servant, he would probably feel pretty bad about how this battle went. Whatever his identity might have been, Archer was a rare and formidable adversary. If only Berserker's sanity hadn't been taken from him, he would have fought to his heart's content and maybe even enjoyed himself. I won't forgive them. I'll, I'll never forgive them. How dare they insult me like this? Ilya's voice echoes in the shattered hall. Whatever tiny embers of rationality might have been returning to him are immediately snuffed out by her voice. He's just Berserker now. His role is to overwhelm and annihilate his master's enemies. Have you healed Berserker? Berserker doesn't need to answer. So long as the wound doesn't kill him, he'll be healed in moments. But to completely recover from this will take as much as three days. I can't wait that long! Fine, we're killing them now! The giant silently objects. It's almost instinctive. At least when it comes to a fight, Berserker has instincts similar to Saber's. He can certainly destroy his enemy easily enough. But if Saber has recovered enough with that she can use her noble phantasm, that would be a different story. Berserker will not fall to a mere sacred sword, but there is always that small chance of something going wrong. His instincts tell him that he should be completely prepared before facing this servant. What? Five lives should be plenty. There's no, there's no, there's no enemy to worry about, even without your god hand. Or what? Are you gonna let them get away even after they made fools of us, Berserker? That's what you're saying. Nobody's gonna escape my forest. Yep, I'm leaving Ren and Saber to you. You can kill them, toy with them, whatever you want. Ilya hops down from the stairs. She walks through the rubble to the exit without a moment's concern for Berserker, bloodied as he is. But suddenly, she stops as if remembering something. Come, let's begin our hunt, Berserker. But you can't kill Saber's master so easily. I'm gonna make sure Shiro dies in the, mo in the worst way imaginable. Well, fuck you too! Ilya heads out of the castle, giggling happily. This bitch is crazy. Did I say she was a sweetheart? I take it back. She's not a sweetheart. I take it back. The sun is about to rise. Ilya knows the forest like the back of her hand. She won't have any trouble finding her prey, even if they try to hide. Her target only has minutes to live. And, I don't know why, but I'm forced out of the ruins. So Sokka kicks me out, saying the girls have to make some adjustments and changing and stuff like that. Man, what is she talking about? Men have things too, you know? I lean against the wall as I grumble. I guess I sound like a sore loser, and that's exactly it. I remember, and then I try to shake off my desires. I can't think about that right now. If I keep lingering on my memories with Saber, I'm a dead man. If I keep lingering on my memories with Saber, I'm a dead man. More than anything, it would be rude to Saber. I made contact with Saber to save her. I shouldn't have any other feelings for Saber. What a crock. It's such a pathetic excuse, even I don't believe it. I can't forget what happened with Saber, but I need to for now. Honestly, I don't have time to worry about that kind of stuff. Our concern right now is how to fight Berserker. Right. I should be doing whatever I can. He told me that, there at the end. I think back to Archer. I never warmed up to him, 
but every word he said stuck with me. I stare at a tree branch. There's only so much I can do. I may not be much help, but I'm gonna do whatever I can as best I can. For starters, I snap off a nearby tree branch. Then I try to find other straight tree branches. Shiro, we're done, come back inside. Tosaka's voice reaches me as I'm in my search. I head back to the ruins carrying the branches I collected. Well, the only other problem is whether I can act anything approaching normal whether I can act anything approaching normal around Saber after looking into her heart, however briefly. This way, Shiro. Rain has something to tell you. I guess I was worrying over nothing. Saber's her usual self. Unlike me, immature as I am, she's probably just approaching this pragmatically. Oh, yeah, I'll be right there. Damn, I'm not gonna let this get me down. I'm so damn dumb. Being the only one blushing over this shit. So I'm going to do my best to keep my composure. There you are. We're going to start our meeting. Well, it may be a meeting, but we don't have time for arguments. There's only so much we can do to defeat Berserker. So can you at least hear me out? Saber and I nod. Our plan is simple. We're no match against Berserker using normal means. If we're going to win, we need to ambush him, which means we need to take his head off in a single attack and not leave him any chance to counterattack. I agree. Simply trading blows with Berserker will not critically injure him. If we are to defeat them, we will require another strategy. Besides trading blows, are you saying we need to attack Berserker before he realizes he's being attacked? Well, sure, I think it's reckless to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with him. But that's just, that sounds just as reckless. He's not the sort that just let something like that happen. Yes, it's pretty optimistic to think we can get right up to Berserker without him noticing us. He asks Iliasville. She'll immediately detect Cerber. She'll immediately detect Saber and Shiro's presence. I mean, I can conceal my presence, but that's not a problem. I don't understand the logic. But I get the sense Ilya can detect me in Saber. And if Osaka is the only one who can conceal herself. You're not saying you'll be the one launching the ambush, are you? Of course. You're the main target here. And I'm the one who can move freely. Leaving Berserker striking from behind me. Leave striking, leave striking Berserker from behind to me. Make it sound so easy. But you sure as hell know it won't be. Of course not. That's why I'm going to have Saber create an opening for me. Saber, how much have you recovered? Fighting normally should be no problem. However, I should avoid using my noble phantasm. With the amount of magical energy I have right now, I will no longer be able to maintain my body the moment I use it. And even if I do, it will not be at full power. So I do not believe it will be sufficient to defeat Berserker. Yes, that's fine. I'll have Saber be the one to fight Berserker, with Shiro, of course. I'll hide nearby watching. I'm just a bonus to Iliasville, so she'll think I abandoned you two and just ran if she doesn't see me around. Well, I suppose that is not impossible. If our chances are slim, we just have to make them better. Shiro seems to be friendly with Iliasville, so we might be able to trick her by talking to her. Tosaka looks at me meaningfully. I may have some objections, but I'll hear you out. If I tell Ilya that Tosaka fled, she'll believe me. She doesn't doubt what people tell her. But there is still a problem. While I can confront Berserker, I cannot permit Shiro to do the same. Shiro simply will not survive an attack from Berserker. Nobody said Shiro needs to fight. Shiro just needs to provide backup while, while keeping his distance from Saber. It's going to be hard for Saber to push past Berserker alone, so help her out if she gets in danger. That is foolish. Shiro is not versed in Magecraft like you. What can he do to support me? Shiro is going to have to figure that out. Not that Masters have a whole lot they can do against Berserker. Even I would only drag Saber down if I got involved. But we just don't have the option to let even one person idle right now. I know very well that Saber will disappear if Shiro dies, but we're gonna have to risk it. 
This whole battle is a gamble to begin with. That is true, but... Saber makes her face and falls silent. Since Osaka's gone quiet too, she must understand how reckless her proposal is. I can't blame them for being worried. The night I met Saber, the night Berserker attacked, the only thing I managed to use to defend her was my own body. It's a strong possibility that we're headed toward a repeat of what happened last night. So while it may be best for me to distance myself from the battlefield, I'm not going to do so unless they force me to. I know. I'll try to think of something. I'll try to think of something to support from a distance. Huh? Was it really that much of a surprise? I just had to support Saber from a distance, right? I'll come up with something. I grabbed the tree branches I gathered earlier as I say that. It's just the right length and exactly the right flexibility. This is the first time I've done this kind of strengthening. But I don't think I'm wrong in principle here. Basically, I just need to layer my strengthening until it turns into something substantial. Besides, he had something like this, so I can use it as reference. On top of that, magical energy has been flowing through my body for a while now. All I have to do is repeat my usual process. I analyze his basic structure and change it. I analyze the material's composition and reinforce it. Starting from the branch, my result should be this should be his bow, but something's missing. I need to think of this from a standpoint from a standpoint of creation. If I want to make something as close as possible to the real thing, I need to envision everything I can about it, down to the smallest detail. I open my eyes. The warped branch was the right shape, but something wasn't. Hmm. Graph, it's not even close. It's ugly, distorted. And yet, I can tell it'll work fine as a bow. Now I'll just have to create an arrow following the same concept. Shiro, you just... Yeah, I think I got the hang of it after the incident with Shinji. You said it yourself, don't strain myself. I see. Well, it's good you have some means to attack, so I won't say anything else. Back to our original topic. So you two will fight Berserker. I'll climb a tree before everything starts and watch from above. And once Saber's created an opening, I'll skewer Berserker from above, which should be his blind spot with all my gems. That's all there is to our plan. It's pretty simple. Osaka turns her attention to us, checking whether we have any questions. Gems, is that your magecraft ring? Even if this were even if this were to work, no amount of half baked magecraft would reach Berserker's body. If we are to harm him, we will need an attack of truly surpassing power. I know that. You're saying we need an attack that's at least rank A. As she says this, Osaka pulls several jewels from her pocket. What are these jewels? Think of it as like my life savings. A single one of these can immediately activate it to a great mag magecraft at rank A. I had 10 of these, but I used one on you. I see. If it is the same caliber of magecraft, then I can say for sure the Berserker will not be able to defend himself. He does not have magic resistance like I do. Even if it's magecraft, an A rank should de definitely pierce his defenses. Exactly. I thought of starting with small batches, but we can't afford to take that much time. I'm thinking of giving Berserker two or three of these. Osaka puffs out her chest confidently, however. Hey, aren't you being a little stingy? I agree. It may not be my place to say, but I believe under the circumstances, you should be using at least half of your stock. Why would you say that? That's not your call. You guys don't understand how hard it was to save all this up. Saber and I protest si silently. So Sokka's life depends on this operation too. We can't let ourselves fail just because she's being stingy. Fine, just half, right? Just half. Oh, come on. I've just kind of been wanting to say that. I know what's at stake here. Anyway, that's our plan. All we have to do now is find a place for me to hide and a spot for Shiro to support Saber. We should get set up before Iliusville gets here. 
Yeah, we can't stay in these ruins anymore. And it's like Tosaka said, we need to find a place where we can all lie and wait for a Berserker. But before that, I'm worried about Saber. I wonder if Saber's really okay. She hasn't said she says she has no problems fighting. But wouldn't it be hard for her to go up against Berserker when she's so weak? Or I suppose I'm more concerned about a noble phantasm. I would not be able to maintain my body if I use it. That's what Saber said. That means Saber will disappear the instant she uses that attack. Saber. Yes, what is it, Shiro? Before we go out to fight, can you promise me one thing? Yes, as long as it is something I can do. Okay. Well, yeah. I don't want you to use your noble phantasm no matter what happens. It's important I don't want you to die, even if it means we defeat Berserker. Yes, I understand. I do not intend to use my noble phantasm either. I do not think I'll be able to defeat Berserker with the amount of magical energy I have, and more importantly, I'll be unable to obtain the Holy Grail if I disappear. She's as direct as ever. It's a relief to hear. Okay. Yeah, that's the saber I know. It's good to hear you being so insanely calm. What do you mean by that, Shiro? Nothing. Nothing at all. Let's just get going. Tosaka will be upset again if we keep her waiting. Yes. It appears complaining to you has become something of a hobby of hers. And with that kind of weird observation, Saber turns to leave the ruins. But then, Saber trips on a chunk of rubble and stumbles forward. I quickly grab her hand from behind. Come on, watch her step! You'll need to be careful in this mess. Huh? Saber seems to be blushing. Saber, what's wrong? Did something happen? No, it's nothing. But if you hold my hand like that, I... Hold on. Hold on! <laughs> Saber's face turns a deep crimson. She must look like I did a few minutes ago. I find myself blushing too now. With her hand in mine, I suddenly remember the sensations I felt with Saber and quickly pull my hand back. The two of us stand rigidly, saying nothing. Let's head out. We'd better get moving. We don't have much time. Yes, let us hurry, Shiro. We head out after that bit of awkwardness. Once we're outside, we'll never come back here. I look back toward the ruin for the last time and then turn back to the battlefield. We reach a clearing in the forest. The sun is rising and a white layer of morning mist blankets the forest. Compared to the much denser forest around us, this is a good vantage point. Sasaka, this place doesn't seem bad. Yeah, it meets most of our conditions, but it might actually be too open. I should be able to escape, but it might be tough for you and Saber. Osaka is such a perfection that she's even considering escape routes. Let's try somewhere else. We still have the time. Osaka returns to the forest. But Saber stands motionless, staring off into the distance. Saber, what are you doing? We need to hurry up or else Iliasville is going to... A chill runs up my spine. I can never forget this feeling. I can't see him or feel his presence, but the sudden weight of the air pressing down around me is definitely coming from him. I found you! Ilya's voice echoes from somewhere in the forest. Beyond the mist, from deeper in the forest, a dark figure approaches. Tosaka, hide! Wait right there, I'm coming to kill you! Maybe it's because we're in a clearing with an open view of the sky, but it feels like Ilya's peeking down at us from up in the clouds. Crap, did she find Shiro already? This isn't good. This place is too wide open. And how fast is she? We have less than two minutes until she... Hey, what are you two waiting for? I keep telling you this is a bad spot. We need to get somewhere else fast. 
Tosaka grabs our hands, but it's too late. No, this is fine, Tosaka. We're lucky enough that the, the three of us are able to fight together. We can't ask for anything more. You dumbass! That's exactly the problem! It's way too open here! Saber can't handle Berserker alone! And you can't get out of his range to support her here! I know you're concerned for me, but we're all in danger here. Besides, we can't escape now anyway. That's true, but... Are you ready, Saber? We're fighting Berserker here. Saber nods quietly. Oh, come on! Fine, I'll be really ticked if you two get thrashed! Tosaka, apparently convinced, disappears into the mist. When she goes into action, she acts quickly. She darts into the forest and then scrambles up a tree. How? They're coming, Saber. Are you ready? I should be asking you the same. Once the battle begins, please do not move past this point. I will not butt Berserker near this spot. The mist wavers. Out of the morning fog, a dark shadow spreads across the clearing. A mad warrior led by a pale girl steps into view. This is a surprise! I thought you were going to flee into the end, or have you given up, brother? She is fitted the fuck up, damn! Illy is about 40 meters from me. We face each other from opposite ends of the clearing. Oh, so Saber got better. That must be why you stopped running. What a shame. It's cute that you think it'll be enough to beat me, though. Sorry, you're gonna die here. Her giggles echo in the forest. Apparently, that ticks her off. Saber's still standing beside me, practically vibrating with animosity. She might launch herself forward at any moment. Oh, you're all quiet now. You're so boring. Are you scared of dying? What a waste. If you beg for your life, but maybe I'll consider sparing you. Osaka's probably in position. She'll probably want to be as close to the center of the clearing as she can. There's a spot where the tree branches overlap. It should be starting enough to support her weight. I see. So that's how it's going to be. Enough chatter then. I'll kill you and Rin. Wait, where's Rin, Shiro? I have to give it to Berserker's master. She knows better than to overlook any details. Tosaka's gone. We stopped working together a while ago. So you two split up? That figures. You and Saber could only drag her down. She should be able to do pretty well on her own. Well, there you go. She's probably out of the forest by now, but I doubt she'll catch up to her even if you go after her right now. Oh, you think so? This forest is an iron's burn bounded field. I always know the instant someone enters or leaves. Nobody's left, so Rin's still in the forest. I have plenty of time to deal with her once I'm taking care of you. That's a relief. If Illy only detects what's going on in and out the forest, and she doesn't know where Tosaka is right now. Dad, and she believes my story pretty easily. She might be fucking stupid. Illy is a truly merciless master. But is she too merciless to have a chance to start over? Ilya, before we fight, there's something I want to ask you. Would you consider quitting being a master and ending this battle? I can't. This is grandfather's command. As long as Berserker's around, I'm a master of the Einsburns. I need to kill other masters to bring home the Holy Grail. But I'm the one who should be asking you a question. I'm the head of the Einsburn household, so I'm not going to repeat what I said earlier. But I might reconsider if you're willing to change your answer. She sounds almost hopeful. But as long as I have Saber with me, I can't agree to what she's asking. My answer is unchanged. I'm Saber's master. If you're not going to quit being a master, I'll defeat Berserker and make you quit. I look at both Ilya and Berserker and say that. In that instant, the air in the clearing tenses with sharp snapping sounds. I see. Then I'm going to kill you now. I'm going to annihilate you. Right down to that conceited head of yours. Oh, what the fuck? 
What the heck's that? Some sort of inscription appearing on Ilya's face. No, it's not just her face. It's a huge command spell covering her entire body. And I can even see it at this distance. It's so much more massive than the ones we have. Playtime's over. Trample them, Hercules. Ilya's voice is completely lifeless. And in response, the giant behind her howls. Whatever the fuck he said. His roar shakes the earth. He screams and thrashes like he lost his mind. He did. His abilities grow even more powerful, like his body is swelling with deformed masses. That is impossible. Was she only depriving him of reason rather than letting him go berserk? I'm not surprised Saber is shuddering. Even I, who can't gauge the warrior's strength, can tell I shouldn't be getting anywhere near that monster. Man, I handle him. Y'all too bitch made, bro. Throw me in the game. Berserk is getting fucked. Up. 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 That's an important word. I can't leave that out. Go. Kill everything you see, Berserker. The air explodes. The giant bellows a roar so different from its anguish wail and leaps. Saber! A streak of silver surges forward in answer. Berserker lands in the middle of the clearing. The earth shakes. Oh, this is so hard! Saber intercepts Berserker as if stopping a falling meteor. It's like watching a mythical battle unfolding in front of me. In a forest shrouded by morning mist, two shadows clash relentlessly. Berserker is simply overwhelming. Berserker's swipes are like whirlwinds. His downward strikes are like waterfalls. Even Saber wouldn't survive a direct hit. But Saber deflects his every attack without faltering or hesitating. She swipes aside the barrage of strikes raining, that, or raining on her like a raging storm. To fail would mean being cut down on the spot. To Saber, each of the blows seemed to strike with her opponent's full might. The clash of swords echoes around the clearing. Berserker has greater reach. Berserker is faster. Berserker has more stamina. All Saber can do is parry the titanic surges of wind from Berserker swings to mitigate the sheer strength, all just to avoid being cut in half. Berserker is like a broken jackhammer. His blade spins in all directions, annihilating everything in his path. Just getting in reach could, could only be fatal. There would be no hope of escape. They'd get caught in that whirlwind blade and ground to, and ground to dust. No normal human would have a chance against that. And if getting close can only mean death, then the only option is fleeing. But Saber steps into the world when it doesn't retreat. She'll be shredded to pieces. The sword sparks off of her, slowly chipping her armor away. Standing in the middle of that vortex, she could be dead in a heartbeat. I can only hold my breath. In ancient times, heroes who fought dragons and demonic beasts must have all been like this, like her. They know perfect well well how vast the gap in strength between them is. But they bet everything on a one in a million shot. A seething mass of violence beyond anything humans are capable of. They just defended until a single opportunity presented itself. Many warriors died without ever seeing the miracle they were waiting for. That's exactly what this battle is. It is a glamorous eye-catching battle, but... It only ends in one way, with Saber's defeat. Each blow chips away a little more at her. Berserker's roar shakes the ground. The sheer whirlwind of his frenzy churns up the atmosphere and sends Saber flying as she tries to defend. Each time Berserker's attacks chip away, at a bit, chip away a bit of Saber's armor, she's thrown to the ground. But instead of remaining down or on her knees, Saber charges right back at Berserker every time. 
but she's at her limit. Tabor's breathing is labored, and her movements are visibly slowing. There won't be any opening. In a few moments, Berserker's titanic weapon will shatter Saber's sword. I gripped the bow I made. I'm going to... You're providing backup! Shoot him! Shoot him! The moment Saber goes flying, I fire at Berserker. This won't hurt him. But it should at least get his attention. The arrow hits Berserker squarely on the temple, but it doesn't even leave a scratch. He did not care! I can't even get his attention. The giant does not block the arrow. He doesn't even seem to care. Make it stronger! That's right, Berserker! Leave Shiro alone! You can do whatever you want with him after you kill Saber! Ilya's laugh echoes through the forest. Damn. I can't do anything. Saber's about to collapse right in front of me, but I can't do anything. I'm powerless. No matter what I do, I can't hurt Berserker, and I'm just distracting Saber. Look, I'm gonna be real, man. I'm like Shiro. I low-key didn't, I low-key don't like the idea of killing masters. And, you know, Ilya is immature. She's just a kid. She needs to learn, right? That's it. She just needs to learn. But at this point, let's just shoot the bitch. You feel me? Let's just shoot Ilya, bro. Like, we can't. This isn't gonna go any good way unless we, like, this isn't gonna go any good way unless we just kill Ilya. Like, just shoot the little girl. Like, just shoot the little girl in the head. Kill the bitch. A slash. Saber sinks into the ground all the way to her ankles as she parries a massive blow. The parrying blade is swift but heavy. The axe sword strikes down from overhead. The brutally powerful weapon grazes Saber's armor as she dodges, then tears up the air earth itself. My jaws clench so hard my teeth could well shatter. Is there really nothing I can do? I can't protect Saber. I can't fight alongside her. There's nothing I can do. All I can do is... Then at least imagine it. It is all you can really do. I should say something like that. You don't need an enemy. The only opponent you need to fight is your own mind. Yeah, what was he saying again? It wasn't one of his typical snide remarks. What he said had weight and importance to it and I needed to understand. Then again, probably everything you told me was a warning I shouldn't ignore. Saber goes flying. This time it's not because she left a way to evade. Berserker hit her this time. That hurricane slash strikes Saber in the side. She stumbles. Coughing violently. She grips her weapon tighter and turns back toward Berserker. The giant doesn't miss the opening Saber finally provides. STOP! My voice doesn't reach them. Shouting is useless and trying to use the bow like Archer would be pointless. Don't I understand yet? What can I do? What should these hands of mine be doing? That's right. What do I need to save Saber? I can't use a bow. A spear won't pierce him. Having a weapon just like the enemy is no solution either. To go up against that giant. A sword to cut through a mountain of stone. An opulent sword sharper than sharp that will never dull. A king's sword able to cut down enemies in a single blow. Like... Like that golden sword I saw in my dream. A sword fit for her. My head hurts. I try to fight down my nausea, but I never take my eyes off Saber. Strangely, the longer I watch Saber fall, the more indescribable pain assaults me. Saber and Berserker seem to be moving in slow motion. I see a row of switchings line up. Saber coughs and for a brief second, she arches in pain. Berserker smashes his axe sword down toward her with all his might. It's as if there's a row of nails in need of hammering down. 
It's like he's knocking down dominoes. The switch flips. Saber! Berserker's axe sword cuts Saber down. She's going to die. The strike splits Saber in half at the waist and pieces of her flesh go flying. No, that's not what's happening. The only thing that's gone flying is pieces of armor. Berserker's only split Saber's armor. Saber left herself open to bait Berserker into a single huge string. And with every ounce of strength she has, she rushes at him. A black roar rips through the air. But he can't escape now, Saber's right in front of him. She shifts her grip on her sword and darts in closer, then swings with all her might. I don't believe this. Saber's attack hits home and the giant, who has seemed so immovable, flies back several meters. And then, get back Saber! Then comes the true attack. She must intend to release the attack from as close as possible. Sasaka jumps down from the branch above and throws her jewels at Berserker as she falls. Shards of ice rain on Berserker. Among those shards are three giant, spear-shaped icicles, each packed with enough magical energy to blow an entire mansion to smithereens. No! Dodge it, Berserker! Ilya, quiet until now, suddenly screams at her servant. She must have sensed the danger, but it's too late. The ice spears aren't falling. They're accelerating towards Berserker. He can't possibly dodge. A one in a million opportunity. Saber's desperate attack, perfectly coordinated with the ice bullet attacks. It has more than enough magical energy to kill Berserker. However, So it's bullshit! The axe sword slices through the air. Even as Saber drives him back, he switches to a single-handed grip on his axe sword and shatters all three ice spears. Blood spatters the clearing. Maybe it's his one arm swing, but he fails to completely destroy the ice. And when it strikes, it severs one of Berserker's arm. That's not all. The ice freezes over Berserker's arm, completely restraining it. But it only got one arm. Saber cries out. It's a reasonable response. Berserker catches Sa Tosaka with his good arm as she falls. Tosaka's face twists in pain. Berserker will have no trouble crushing Tosaka with his hand. I run. I don't care if I drag them down. It doesn't matter if I can't do anything. I'm not going to let Tosaka die. Saber must be too weak to even stand, but somehow gets to her feet. Tosaka must be in agonizing pain, but he stretches a hand out as she hangs her head downward, and then... Just as I thought, she grins wickedly. Whoa! Everyone gasps! Saber, me, and even Berserker must have all been frozen in our tracks. One person could only have so many tricks up their sleeve. She knew this might happen, and she hadn't even bothered to tell us. Berserker squeezed harder around her. He's a heartbeat too late. Got you! Four bullets of pure light streak toward Berserker. Four bullets, four gems, four rapid shots at the most extreme close range. That has to be enough to end the Dark Mad Warrior. Or rather, the attack perfectly, completely snuffs out his life. It must have blown Berserker's head clean off. The blood splatter even reaches me, 10 meters from where Berserker stands. It's kind of a lot more than blood in the mess, but I don't think she overdid it. Our opponent was a monster. Berserker would have crushed Tosaka if she hadn't blown his head off. <sighs> I slow my frantic run. 
So Sokka's still in Berserker's grip, but the battle's over. Berserker's face is still hidden in a plum of smoke. The battle might not be over! From that singing sound, it must have been a hell of an explode. No way. I hear Tosaka's voice. She's looking at the smoke in disbelief. Hold on. Am I imagining things? The Berserker's hand tightened on Tosaka? Tosaka's staring at the plum of smoke. It doesn't last long. The smoke starts to dissipate. And in the clearing air... Berserker's face, the face that should have been blown off his body, appears. So this is bullshit, right? That's what this is? Absolute bullshit? Osaka cowers under that evil demon's gaze at a loss for words. <laughs> Laughter fills the air. Ilya, who remained at the far side of the clearing, laughs delightedly. I see you in a new light, Rin. I didn't think you could have possibly killed Berserker even once. But too bad. Berserker won't disappear that quickly. That easily, you see? He can't die unless he's killed 12 times. Killed 12 times? She must have figured something out from what Iliga just told her. So Sokka looks aghast, her face twisting in regret. I get it. I should have figured that out as soon as I learned his true name. Hercules should have the bow of Hydra, but his only weapon was a rock. His noble phantasm isn't an object he's carrying. The symbol for the hero Hercules is... That's right! His body itself is his noble phantasm. You should know about Hercules' 12 labors. The Greek hero Hercules overcame 12 monumental tasks to atone for his sins, and his reward was immortality. You know exactly what that means, don't you? A stockpile of lives. Layers of resurrection magecraft. That's why he can't die easily. He possesses the curse of immortality given by the gods so he can endure the same number of trials or deaths he once overcame. That's my berserker's noble phantasm, God's hand. Understand? You killed Berserker there, but he still has five lives left. You were so close, Rin. Berserker would have disappeared if you'd only used five times the jewels you just did. I can't hear Ilya's voice clearly. From the corner of my eye, I see Saber charging at Berserker. Saber dashes over. Sasaka tries to pry open Berserker's fingers, but they won't budge. And then... It's okay, Berserker. Crush her. The burning eyes glare at Tosaka. Tosaka screams. Berserker's enormous fingers dig into Tosaka, trying to rip out her insides. There's only one outcome. Osaka's lifely body, lifeless body being crushed to nothing. Nigga, it's now or never. You better make that damn sword, bruh. You better make that damn sword. I run. I forget who I'm up against. I even forget where I am. My mind is completely burned out. I will not allow it. Saber cuts towards Berserker. Her invisible sword swings at Berserker's defenseless arm as if slicing through a radish. But it's no use. Saber's attack pings harmlessly off the Berserker's arm. His grip on Tosaka doesn't loosen. Just moving must be agony for Saber. She swings her sword desperately, blood trickling from her mouth. What? Shiro? She freezes the instant she sees me rushing at Berserker. Let go of her, you bitch! I slap mindlessly at his back with my bow. The giant is unfazed. He doesn't consider me a threat. My fingers are getting numb. What the hell is he? If I'm the one getting numb from hitting him. Run, Shiro. Huh? I look up when I hear Saber. In that instant, I go flying through the air like a leaf. 
I hit the ground and tumbled like a pit, bit of stray garbage. Berserker smacked me away with that frozen sword. I try to block the attack with my bow, but it shatters instantly. And I'm being thrown so far away. I writhe in pain. That breaking sound hadn't come from the bow. One of my arms is bent at the wrong angle, in the wrong spot. Damn. When I breathe in, my lungs hurt so bad I want to puke them up. I can't breathe properly with all this blood flooding my mouth. But that doesn't matter. Breathing would just make me pass out. Better that I not breathe. I wake up. Right now I need to get to him. Him! I run. It's my turn. I'm gonna break his arm and save Tosaka. He must have eyes on the back of his head. He swings his sword casually like he's batting inside a fly. I can dodge it. I won't let him know that's been completely frozen and hit me so easily. Damn, my body's sinking. He must have grazed my leg. Ridiculous. That's enough. Stay back, master. I can't do that. I can't let Tosaka die. What do I need to do to save her? A weapon. A blade would be best. I have my feet broken pieces of the bow. Above me, Berserker's sword swinging right at me. There's no time to think. I let the magical energy flow through me. The strengthening succeeds easily, but down comes Berserker's sword. The fragments are completely, finally pulverized. I meant to dodge, but instead my body slams to the ground. Clearly, there was no point in strengthening broken shards. I'll have to do this from scratch. It shouldn't be impossible. Anyone can imitate, as long as they have an example to follow. I just need to duplicate the foundation, structure, work, experience, time, and... The giant turns around. It must have decided to kill the little nuisance before finishing Tosaka off. I push up from the ground and glare at the giant. There's no fear. I'm too burned out for fear. But behind me... I see someone prepared to disappear. I see someone de determined to use the sacred sword. Don't use it! Wind, pe wind peels back from the blade. The golden sword begins to reveal itself in Saber's hand. I told her not to use it. The sword I told her never to use, no matter what. I snap. The last thread has been holding me together finally gives. DON'T USE IT, SABER! My left hand burns. A command spell stroke disappears. What? Why? We have no other choice, Shiro! I don't care. To hell with that. All I know is that if she uses it, she'll disappear. You are already on your last leg from unleashing your sword. You can't use it right now. So just hold on. If you can't use your sword, I'll make one you can use. Then at least imagine it. If you can't possibly beat the opponent in reality, then beat them in your imagination. If you can't win yourself, imagine something that can win. It's so obvious. It's the only thing I can do. I have to make it. I have to make something that won't lose. I have to make the strongest weapon. I have to imagine the ultimate imitation. It has to fool everyone, even me. It shouldn't be that hard. It's not something impossible. Since the beginning, my body has been a specialized magic circuit for this purpose alone. I leap up. My entire body burns like it's on fire. My left hand is crimson. What? That sword is mine. Sabra's voice rings with shock disbelief. She's staring at the weapon in my hands, at the thing that shouldn't exist. The sword seems to have a will of its own. The golden blade moves as if it's being drawn to the giant's arm. It slashes at him, tearing through the arm. Tosaka falls to the ground along with the arm that's been holding her. 
The golden sword shatters as if it's been made of glass. My blood begins to flow backward. It doesn't matter. The sword broke. That's impossible. If I imitated that sword, it shouldn't have shattered like that. It shattered because it wasn't sufficient. My image of the sword wasn't enough. Berserker's furious gaze turns toward me. His massive sword swings up at me. This time it's determined to cut me in half. It doesn't matter. Berserker, you're not my enemy right now. I'm only fighting against one person right now. The last one wasn't perfect. My image of it was flawed, so the sword that should have been invincible broke. If I'm gonna duplicate things, I need to work on not just their shape, but also their maker. I hear the others holding their breath. In front of me, I see an axe sword rushing toward me like an oncoming storm, and the half-formed sword ready to block it. In desperation, I try to use the sword to block the incoming blade, but that doesn't matter to me. Right now, I need to finish this blade to make it real. Another mistake. You're not fit for fighting, Shiro Emiya. Your battle is supposed to be a mental one, a fight against your own self. You don't have to remind me. What I need to do is simple. Projection, start. I concentrate. I'm challenging my own self. There can be neither deviation nor compromise. Determining creation ideology, anticipating base essence, duplicating material structure, replicating the forger's skill, resonating with the possessor's experience, imitating the uncountable years, and surpassing every manufacturing process. Illusion shall bind the reality to forge a sword. The giant roars. My sword deflects a counter's gulps assailing me from the enemy's furious attacks. But that's about it. I'm knocked away from him. The moment I come to, the sword leaves everything to me. The attacks I blocked so easily a moment ago now toss me around effortlessly. I can't feel my arms. The skin of my wrist are, is blistered red and I'm surprised I can keep my grip on the sword. My legs don't work. I can only imagine every muscle shredded to ribbons. I can't get up. I made a sword that surpasses Berserker, but that's all. I'm just the one who made it. I can't wield the sword I worked so hard to make. Pass it to Saber! Hey, this about to be damn Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Pass her the sword, nigga! A, so a shadow looms over me. He must know who he has to kill first now. I rush away and Berserker rushes after me like a gust of wind. His enormous sword swings toward me. But it's deflected. In complete disbelief, I realize another hand has closed around my own. The air splits around me. The giant attacks with all his might, trying to destroy everything around him. But right before that happens... Shiro, your hand! She's so close. I can hear her voice over the den. A berserker is a storm front coming to attack me. Saber is a gale rushing to my side. Saber sprints over to me and twists around, gripping me firmly. The rock sword shatters. The golden flash explodes with the giant axe's sword and continues ahead, slicing through Berserker's rock-like body without slowing. Maybe I copied the form so well that I copied some of its abilities too. The golden sword lodges deep in Berserker's body and glows so brilliantly that light pours from the giant's body. And then in an instant, the light fades and the forest falls silent. All the strength flees my limbs. The heat that had been surging through me rapidly cools. The sword I made begins to disappear. I watch it vacantly. 
Saber and I remained together, holding the sword in our hands until it disappeared completely. Wind sweeps through the clearing. The earth shaking howl and the blood that had churned up the very air are gone. So is that your blade, Saber? The previously invincible giant, now immobile, looks through the knight who defeated him and speaks in a low, rumbling voice. This is Caliburn. The sword and the stone meant to select the king. It is my blade and it was lost forever. However, it is not your sword anymore. It was merely an illusion the boy created. Saber nods quietly. An imitation. A blade that will never exist again. And yet, Berserker's chest opens up. He begins to dissolve. His body begins to crumble like wet sand, beginning where the sword pierced him and rapidly expanding outward. But that illusion should not be underestimated. I never expected it could have destroyed me seven times over in a single blow. His dying words are spoken without emotion. The mad warrior keeps his role to the very end and fades away in a dispersing haze into the misty morning air. Dizziness rocks me where I stand. This is probably the price to play for such excessive use of magecraft. The blood that rages through me is putting pressure on my brain, sending far too much oxygen out to the rest of my body. My head feels like it could split open. The enemy has disappeared and whatever was numbing the pain earlier has faded. As if to make me pay for the accumulated toll of this incredible battle, the dizziness and headache crash into me like twin meteors. I'm about to collapse, but Saber supports me. Saber shouldn't have the energy for that either at this point. No, I'm fine. I've got a few broken bones, but it's nothing fatal. I've got that healing thing and it's already kicking in, so I'll be fine. That is nonsense. You use projection magecraft to the extreme. You must rest right now. But there's someone I have to talk to first. Saber stands ready. Ilya stares at where Berserker had been standing, her eyes hollow. Good. I do not know if there is a reason for her to remain here, but she has spared us the need to pursue her. She shall die graceful. No, Saber, don't hurt Ilya! Without Berserker, she's... I stopped Saber with the last remaining strength I have. Ilya doesn't even seem to notice we're here. She just stares at the ground. No way. Did you die, Berserker? She sounds like an abandoned child. Ilya lifts her head absentmindedly. It happens suddenly. Ilya collapses like a puppet with its strings cut. I don't know what's happened. I just stare at Ilya where she lies. And at almost the same time, Sosaka raises her hand. She's free now that Berserker's arm disappeared. I must have loosened up the moment I learned Osaka was safe. My vision blurs and I can feel my body trying to pass out. I can't show that kind of weakness. We may have defeated Berserker, but we're still in the forest. Weary as we may be, we have to force ourselves to get out of the forest. I look up at the sky as it begins to lighten. The town is a long way away. All my allies are wounded. Every single inch of me hurts. And yet morning has come. We survived the night I was prepared not to. After defeating our greatest enemy, we leave the winter forest.
Holy fucking shit. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Yo. That was actually insane, man. Like. I can't, I still can't believe I did this entire chapter in one go. This shit was just so crazy. I just could not. I couldn't. I just didn't want to wait. I didn't want to wait until the next day to do it, man. It was too crazy. I had to see where this was going. But wow. I really don't have any words. This this was fucking awesome. Yo. It's like every chat I'm I'm loving this game more and more every fucking chapter that I play. Real shit. Seriously. That's the end of the episode, guys. If y'all enjoyed, like, subscribe, leave a comment, or read a into the next one. Oh, actually, hold on. Okay, so y'all know I went to Dragon Con. I mentioned it a few times. I, I, mentioned, I mentioned it in my last episode, I think. I went to Dragon Con, right? So y'all already know I've got my Renda figure, because Higurashi was one of my, is, used to be my favorite show until last week. It used to be my favorite anime of all time. And I had got this Renda figure, I think when I was like 16 years old. That was, bro, that was when I was just obsessed with Higurashi, bro. But I got this Renda figure, right? But this is the only figure I have. So when I went to Dragon Con, I saw this, bro. Y'all might fry me for liking Monogatari. I know, I know that's like such a big freaking controversial thing. But, bro, you cannot look me in my face and tell me this ain't hard, bro. Right, we got, we got Kiss Shot. Arcerola Orion, no, Kiss Shot Orion, Arcerola, Heart Under Blade. Who the fuck call him up for while I'm doing my outro? But this was the only thing I bought from Dragon Con. You can't tell me don't go hard though. Like, come on, that's Kiss Shot. That's Heart, that's Heart Under Blade. That's Heart Under Blade. The heart is Under Blade. I wish they had like a freaking, an Ogi figure, bro. An Ogi figure? Because Ogi is my favorite character. I love Ogi. Ogi, bro. That's my favorite character. Like, oh man, she was just so freaking cool. But, hey, don't fry me in the comments for liking Mono Guitar. I know a lot of people don't rock with that, but come on now. Peace out. I love y'all. Tap into the next one. Hope y'all enjoy it. Man, I can't wait to get into this next one, bro.